San Francisco. I played my heart out for it. Number 16, Joe Montana. In big games on great teams that believed they were the best against teams who believed they were too. And that's what we have tonight. Two first place teams proud of their past, confident about the future. Under the lights on the biggest stage. Players live for games like this. For the moments that make everybody rise to their feet. Defining moments that remind us why we love the game. On Monday Night Football. His 49ers, champions of the NFC West at 10 and 3. Been a long time since we've said that. And the San Francisco 49ers step onto the field for a huge December game in Candlestick. There are a lot of Steeler fans here, too. They see Big Ben, despite the pain in his ankle, ready to go, as are we. With the Monday Night Football launch, engineered by GMC. We've saved the best for last on Week 15. The best matchup of this weekend, and welcome to San Francisco. So everything happened perfect for Pittsburgh yesterday. Houston lost, Baltimore lost. Now it's in the Steelers' hands. Win out, and they are the number one seed. The defending champs will have the road to the Super Bowl go through their AFC house. Ben Roethlisberger playing, as we've mentioned throughout the night. It's been a big story all week. Roethlisberger injured the ankle in the last game 11 days ago against Cleveland. He's had a lot of work in terms of treatment during the week. A shot to try to heal the pain and get through it. And John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, didn't look like it earlier this afternoon. But he will go so important for this Pittsburgh team here tonight. Yeah, and I don't think you should take Ben Roethlisberger's toughness for granted. A lot of players play hurt in this league, but very few players can play great when they're hurt like Big Ben has done throughout his career. And I think they're going to need to throw the ball to win tonight. But luckily for the Steelers, they have two of the most exciting young wide receivers in all of football. They're led by Mike Wallace. He's become the go-to guy for the Steelers. He has back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, and he can fly, and San Francisco better be really careful with him. Then there's Antonio Brown just in his second season out of Central Michigan. He is closing in on 1,000 yards himself. He can also hurt you as a punt returner. But I think most importantly for the Steelers, they have to take care of the football because the 49ers have taken it away 31 times and they lead the NFL in a turnover margin. That's part of this great turnaround for San Francisco. Jaws, if I would have told the San Francisco fan one year ago, hey, next year your team will be 10-3, and three, have the division clinched, chance to win the number two seed if you win out, they would have signed for it. But San Francisco's lost two of the last three, so there's a little angst and concern. Oh, Mike, this game is huge for the 49ers. It's been a long time since they've been on this stage, and they want to prove to the world that they belong. A win over a quality team like the Pittsburgh Steelers will be a real confidence boost to the 49ers. And the 49ers are a physical football team, and they're fueled by their defense. And, oh, by the way, they only allow 14 points per game. That's the best in the NFL. And their head coach, Jim Harbaugh, he quarterbacked in this league for 15 years. He knows how important it is to win in December. Well, put it to perspective, the greatness of these franchises as we go into the Verizon Red Zone. Six Super Bowl championships, Pittsburgh. Five San Francisco put them together 11. First game in NFL history between two teams with 11 combined Super Bowl wins. And you'll see it from San Francisco in HD. Our telecast tonight in high definition presented by Verizon. Right back in 30 seconds. Tonight's Subway, fresh take. A couple of big stars out of the line. Let's start with San Francisco, four-time Pro Bowler. All-Pro linebacker Patrick Willis, second consecutive week. He's out with a hamstring injury. The big loss on the Steelers' side is the much-discussed one-week suspension for James Harrison. This hit on Cleveland's Colt McCoy last Thursday. So Harrison, the big guy off the edge, out for Pittsburgh. But Jaws, San Francisco's still going to have its hands full with Pittsburgh's pressure. No question about it. Alex Smith has been sacked 18 times in the last three games. Good blitzing teams have been able to break down the protection schemes of the 49ers. Let's go back to Baltimore a few weeks ago. They love to blitz. You will see an unblocked defender right in the face of Alex Smith. Protection has to pick these up, and you see another vicious hit on Alex Smith. Last week, the Arizona Cardinals, kind of a carbon copy of this defense we'll see from Pittsburgh. Here's the 3-4 Fire X, another defender clean at Alex Smith, unblocked. Tonight, you will see Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator for the Steelers, or in this game, 
bring the pressure on Alex Smith to see if the protection can handle their pickups. But you think Pittsburgh will be good without Harrison and they're without another key player. Their center, Marquise Pouncey, high ankle sprain, just like the Super Bowl. He's out and Doug Ligurski starts. Yeah, when you lose your best offensive lineman and have to make major adjustments, it's tough. Especially tough against this 49er defensive line led by the Smith brothers. And I'm talking about Alden Smith, their rookie out of Missouri. He has ten and a half sacks and he's ruined football games. And they're led by Justin Smith, the heart and soul of the San Francisco 49ers. He makes the effort play of the year that ignites this 49er football team earlier in the season. This is a talented front four of the 49ers, and they're going to give this Pittsburgh Steeler offensive line all they want tonight. Uh, the lights are on. It was worth the wait. Big game for not just the Steelers and the Niners, but a lot of teams at both conferences. Coming up next on Monday Night Football. You've been watching ESPN's Monday Night Football Launch, engineered by GMC, the official vehicle of Monday Night Football. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Championship after championship. Trophy upon trophy. For a generation of NFL fans, the Steelers of the 70s, the Niners of the 80s, define modern football dynasties. With toughness, they won titles. With grace, they define greatness. One has returned as a regular among the NFL elite. The other welcome back to the top this year. Two legendary franchises share the stage tonight. The Steelers and the 49ers sell out crowd here at Candlestick. And when the game gets going and the Steelers do something, you'll see plenty of terrible towers. As always, Steelers fans travel well. Toss one by San Francisco and deferring the option to the second half. So much on the line, both sides. Mike Tomlin, youngest coach to win a Super Bowl. His Steelers beat the Patriots in week eight by eight points. So they win tonight. They got the tiebreaker edge. They win out, and they are the number one seed in the AFC. Baltimore and their entire team, and their coach John Harbaugh watching younger brother Jim Harbaugh's San Francisco 49ers pulling for them for brotherly love and also for their help in the AFC. And San Francisco get tied with New Orleans. They're even at 11 and 3, second best record of the conference. The tiebreaker belongs to the 49ers head to head with the Saints because of one fewer conference losses. Storylines here tonight, and that's number one. He's not T-bowing, he's bending. And we'll find out if Roethlisberger can hold up with that left ankle, and you can see right there, there are two different shoes. Heavy tape job and a brace for Roethlisberger with the high ankle sprain. Now, Mike, we've been around these two teams the last couple of days, and they are both lathered up for this game. There's a lot at stake tonight. Antonio Brown, who John talked about before, very likable second-year man out of Central Michigan. <laughs> They're taking a punt back for touchdown this year. He's in the groove and ready to go. Part of the great San Francisco equation this year has been special teams as well. They've been outstanding. Yeah, you're going to see number 51, Blake Costanzo. He's the ringleader of this special team coverage unit. Under new special teams coach Brad Seeley and David Akers. What a pickup he's been for the 49ers. Exactly 20 minute delay because the transformer blew. So we take the top off this one in, in San Francisco. Pittsburgh's Antonio Brown brings it back. Up the middle, Brown. Chased down from behind in the 30 yard line. D. Williams comes up to get him. 36 on the return, and here's Roethlisberger. He's only missed six games in his eight-year NFL career with injury. He gets the start here tonight. Yeah, Mike, if you Google the word tough, a picture of Ben Roethlisberger is going to show up. I mean, he is barn strong. He can beat you with his physical tools now, and as well as his football IQ. You know, he's really hurt tonight. There's no question that. Uh, we've documented it, but he's a warrior. We'll see how long he can hang in there tonight. A 
Opening drive from the 30, Richard Mendenhall. Gets one. Very tough defense to run on. Roethlisberger has been all week with ice and stem and heat and trying to get everything done to the ankle because he is a guy who is so essential, as John said, to what Pittsburgh does when they're out of the pocket and the offense is rolling. Mike, the strength of his game is mobility, extending the play. We've got to watch tonight how that immobility will impact his performance. Second and nine, here is Mendenhall, eluded the first tackle, and the great effort guy, Justin Smith, comes to get him a couple of yards shy of the first down. It's a third down for this group. Mendenhall coming off the field, but he'll do most of the carrying. Hasn't had a 100-yard game in his last five. Wallace and Antonio Brown change the face of this offense. Hines Ward, a third receiver you'll see a lot. And Keith Miller always gets open, it seems, on third down. Changes up front. Ligurski, the center, starts with the injured Marquise Bouncy. Trey Essex, not Chris Kimoyatu, goes in at left guard. And the Steelers have struggled their last three games in third down efficiency. Empty set, Hines Ward on the field, third and two. It's a four-man rush, out quick. There's Miller, first down at the 41-yard line. This is a good call right here. You got Ben in the shotgun. Get the ball out quickly. It's just going to be one step, plant, deliver the football. Does a nice job of coming through that throw. Once again, it's his left high ankle sprain. You'll see he's going to protect his feet when bodies are around him. Mike Wallace just ran right by Terrell Brown. And I'm sure Mike Wallace just said, hey, big fella. Boy, Ben is hobbling around already. Isaac Redman joins Mendenhall on the backfield, leads the way for Rashad Mendenhall. Can only gain maybe a yard. It's San Francisco defense. Isaac Sopoaga on the nose. Along with the rest of the guys up front, Justin Smith, Ray McDonald, and Alden Smith, the pass rusher. Toughest to run against in the league. Patrick Willis out. Navarro Bowman calls the signals. Larry Grant fills in for Willis. Did a nice job last week. Secondary, five interceptions for the safety to John Golson. And Carlos Rogers, who came over from the Redskins. Those two guys patrol in the back end. Second and eight to Mike Wallace. Two tackles missed. Wallace takes off. Wallace down the sideline and out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Off the no-back set, the Steelers motion to a quad formation. Four receivers to the left. They isolate Mike Wallace on a slant route. He crosses face. Culliver misses a tackle. Bad angle by the safety man. And if you make a mistake against Mike Wallace, a six-yard gain will turn into 60 in a hurry. And once again, good delivery by Ben. You can see he still can't transfer his weight properly, but he is so strong, he can still deliver the football with accuracy and velocity. Gain of 36. Longest for Wallace in his last seven games. Engine Hall left. Harris Harrelson starts the tackling. Ball came out. The 49ers coming out of the pile with the ball. And nothing being signaled by the officials except... It's down at the 18. Well, he's clearly yep. down. Yep. Are you sure that, John? Is he, or is he no, laying on bodies? He's laying on top of bodies. Yeah. See there. There you see the yep. knee come down. Yep. So it's a game of three in second and seven. In the red zone, Pittsburgh, and Ben fires, intercepted. Carlos Rogers has his sixth. Rogers on the run. Tackled by Max Stark, shy of the 30. It's rare that teams get in the red zone on San Francisco. And that time, Carlos Rogers erased it with his sixth interception of the season. Opening turnover, San Francisco. Their ball when you come back.
ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by the Droid Razor. Thin is no longer frail, only at Verizon. City, what's your story? City can help you write it. Learn more at stories.city.com. Toyota and NFLshop.com. Get free shipping on all orders today. 49 degree night as you enjoy some of the holiday scenes in the beautiful city of San Francisco. Niner fans happy with Carlos Rogers, the guy who couldn't catch the interceptions when they came his way in Washington. He now has six, one shy of the league lead as Roethlisberger was picked in the red zone for the third time this year. Now Alex Smith takes over. From the 27, Frank Gore. To the right with a gain of three. Back to the turnover, John. A poor route distribution. David Johnson doesn't cross the safety space. There's no separation. And really, Ben Roethlisberger should throw the ball to the top of the screen to Antonio Brown as the outlet. Poor route distribution, easy interception, and a bad decision by Ben Roethlisberger. And that's what happens when you miss practice time. I don't care how experienced you are in the same system. After a gain of four on Gore, pressure's picked up, and Smith throws to Vernon Davis, who's brought down by Polamalu after a first down's picked up at the 38-yard line. Most uh, importantly, the pass protection held up. The Steelers did bring five. They tried to create some pressure, but it held up. It's been an area they've been struggling with. Alex Smith, the quarterback, the former number one overall pick, John. Where has he improved this year? Well, he's just reliable. I think this structured system that Jim Harbaugh brought to San Francisco has really helped Alex Rock, Smith. Just got to pick it up in a red zone. On the 38, a first down pass. Out of the sideline, Michael Crabtree. He catches the most passes for his 49er team. It's 56 now on the season. It complements the running of Frank Gore over 1,000 yards for the fifth time in his career. Delaney Walker plays all over the formation. Watch him tonight. Kyle Williams playing very well the past month. Emerging wide receiver. Up front, an eye on 74. Joe Staley suffered a concussion on the first play of the game last week. While he returned to practice, was cleared late this week. It's a line that has been intact most all of this season. They do a lot of this. A run off the edge. A sweep. Ted Ginn. And the speedy receiver right at the mark, first down, 49. Well, there's the jet sweep. You see this in college football, and they like to use 10, 400 meters. This is just a full-speed dash by Ginn, and they're going to try to snap it before the Steelers can get there. And they're asking Ted Ginn to outrun anybody, and that's what he's done seven or eight times this year, a creative play. You don't see much of it in the NFL, Jaws, but Ted Ginn. He can still fly. Well, you see it a lot in high school, John. <laughs> Pretty simple play, but effective. Backfield empty. Alex Smith likes to operate like this. Moore couldn't hang on with Ryan Clark closing in on him. The Pittsburgh defense, as you know, Dick LeBeau, the great coordinator. They're always good. Those two veterans over a decade in the year now for Kiesel and Hampton. That's for the linebackers. Without suspended James Harrison, Jason Worlds. Second year out of Virginia Tech bookends Lamar Woodley. In the secondary, Ike Taylor for about five, six years. Gets your best receiver, covers them everywhere. Then you have the incomparable Troy Polamalu showing up anywhere and everywhere on the back end for Pittsburgh. Second and ten, they show a pass. Draw it with four. And he's into Steeler territory at the 46, third and five coming up. Not a lot of people challenge the Pittsburgh Steelers' base defense. A lot of people try to get him a nickel, but the Steelers are going to run right off the right side behind their rookie fullback, Bruce Miller. They told us they're going to challenge the strength of the Pittsburgh Steelers' run defense, and that's their base 34 look that features KT Hampton, their longtime Pro Bowl nose. All right, this is where the Steelers like to heat it up. Third and five, they bring five. Smith has time. He's got a first down with Kyle Williams at the 
eight-yard line, second-year receiver out of Arizona State. This is a nice job with a slot combination. You see Williams come in short motion. He's going to break back to the outside. Ball's thrown perfectly. And Kyle Williams, the sixth-round draft choice out of Arizona State a couple years ago, has come on in recent weeks and become a go-to guy in key situations for this 49er offense. And, man, is he physical. This kid will block you. Halfway through the opening quarter, opening drive, San Francisco. Smith right back to Williams. A talented athlete. He's the son of Kenny Williams, who's the White Sox GM in Chicago. The White Sox drafted him. Was a very good baseball prep player. Went the football route. Injured last year. Breakthrough the second half of this season. And right now, the 49ers are developing a nice offensive rhythm. The quick passing game. Alex Smith getting the ball out of his hand quickly. The offensive line so far, good job of identifying the Steelers' blitz and picking them up. So far, so good for the 49ers. Four to the left. Clark and Polamalu stop him with a first down at the 27-yard line. You know, Frank Gore had five straight 100-yard games. He's been quiet in the last few weeks. He's had ankle and knee issues himself, but he is clearly the man on this 49er offensive football team. They're throwing three-step drops. They're frustrating the Pittsburgh Steelers blitz packages. They're getting rid of the ball before they can get there, and they're mixing in Frank Gore, a good balance opening drive by Jim Hall, Harbaugh, and the 49ers. Four left. Drop from the fullback, Bruce Miller. Frank Gore into the red zone at the 14-yard line. Gain of 13. What do you think of Bruce Miller? You're talking about a rookie from Central Florida that was a defensive end. Watch a fullback on a kickout block to the left side right here. And Frank Gore gets excellent surge from his teammates inside. You don't see a lot of clean holes like this against this Steeler defense, Jaws. And Delaney Walker, the number two tight end, they like a lot of two tight end formations, caved in the right side of that Steelers offense. Now, this is where the 49ers have to show up in the red zone. Four out, Kendall Hunter in. Smith pressure has to get rid of it. And it's incomplete. Cameron Hayward heated him up. All these Steeler defensive linemen look the same to me. Cameron Hayward, first-round draft choice out of Ohio State. That time comes right up the middle. Unblocked, really. And Alex Smith goes to his hot receiver. You're lucky to get up from some of those collisions. Yeah, this has been their problem, John, as of late. Not picking up those blitzes, unblocked defenders after Alex Smith, and not executing in the red zone. It's been their Achilles heel. Play 12 of the drive, it's Hunter, the rookie out of Oklahoma State, stopped by Ziggy Hood. So Jim Harbaugh, who talked about the red zone difficulties with a bit of disdain when asked about it this week, when we were at practice Saturday, they put extra work and time inside the 20 this week. Well, eventually it's got to pay off. You know, this is a red zone league. A lot of teams move the ball 20 to 20 and kick field goals. Those are the teams that'll be watching the playoffs on television. You've got to be able to punch the football into the end zone when you get these opportunities. Frank Gore back in, third and ten. Smith firing for Crabtree. First and goal, San Francisco. Just shy of the two. That is a big-time throw by Alex Smith. First of all, you see the nice, solid protection by the 49ers. That's where it starts. Yeah, you're going to see a clear out at the top of the screen by Kyle Williams, and that allows Crabtree to work that corner route right in behind him. You see three 49ers on three different levels. That's an old West Coast pattern right there. Coach Harbaugh brings that in here, Jaws from Stanford. That's a big third down conversion. That's just what this 49er offense needs in a red zone. Huge. Play clock running down. Three tight ends for San Francisco. On first and goal, it's good. Loss of two yards. Ryan Clark comes up to make the play. Well, that's one thing you do not like 
losing yardage on running plays, especially inside the plus five. Just take a look at the penetration by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right guard Snyder gets knocked backwards. That forces Gore to cut it back into a host of Pittsburgh Steelers defenders. Penetration kills you. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, they get it. They play with tremendous pad level. Play 15 of a seven-minute drive. Smith, got to pull the trigger. Incomplete. Had Kyle Williams in the back of the end zone. Accuracy in this area of the field is critical. It's a compressed area of the field. Precision has got to be at its optimum right here. Alex Smith does a nice job of moving, but you got to hit this throw to Kyle Williams. These are the plays you can't leave on the field. Well, Kyle Alex Williams has got to be decisive there, too. He's got to sit down, yeah. give the quarterback a clean indicator of what you're going to do. Those are plays that kill you. From the four, Polamalu off the edge. Changes the trajectory of the pass to Gore, incomplete. And a field goal attempt coming. Well, when you get in a no-back set or you're free-releasing all your eligible receivers, you have to throw the ball hot against the blitz. Here's Polamalu forcing a hot, and the quarterback has to throw the ball before the blitz can get there. And Frank Gore is wide open. I think he scores here. Again, the accuracy in this area of the field, you got to put it on his numbers. We're maybe a foot outside in front of his belt buckle. Let him catch it and turn up the field. An inaccurate throw by Alex right there. Cost him a touchdown. David Akers with that field goal adds to his NFL league lead in scoring. Ties Jerry Rice for the most points in one season for a 49er. Harbaugh wanted a flag on the Steelers. Instead, he has a 3-0 lead. It's the longest drive the 49ers have had, 17 plays, since the 2008 season. But 17 plays and a field goal been a bit of a story for the San Francisco team this year. The good news is David Akers has 37 field goals. The NFL record in a year is 40. But well, it's because of their failures to score touchdowns in the red zone that he's on pace for that mark. Great chance to be the Pro Bowl kicker. A touchback there. And the Steelers get their second drive at the 20. Big Ben hobbles back out. <laughs> 10 and 3 and 10 and 3. Two teams that are in the tournament. They are in the playoffs. The huge seating implications on the line tonight. Pittsburgh and San Francisco. Just the second drive for the Steelers. Roethlisberger intercepted on the last drive. Runs for shot Mendenhall. Almost four yards to the 24. All the conversation of the Roethlisberger ankle, if you didn't see it last Thursday night. The home win over Cleveland, a high ankle sprain here. Obviously, high ankle sprain, it's above the bone. It's when the leg turns in, the ankle turns out. Because of the ligaments above the ankle, up connected to the bones at the bottom of the leg, that's why it is so much more difficult to overcome than a lower ankle sprain. And why Roethlisberger needed all the different types of treatment virtually around the clock this week back in Pittsburgh. Only one day of practice, Saturday. Second and six, taking a shot down the sideline from Mike Wallace. Who had a step on Jarrell Brown, but was overthrown. Yeah, yeah, Wallace, called it. Wallace beat Brown early in this football game, and I know everybody saw it in Pittsburgh. They said, let's go get him again. That time, Wallace gets by Terrell Brown again. Ben overthrows him. Mike Wallace has become the premier deep threat in all of football. 22 catches of over 40 yards. That's a lot <laughs> since 09. 4-2 speed at the combine coming out of Ole Miss. This kid can bring it. He can fly. Noel Moore, the back, third and six. San Francisco brings the pressure. Roethlisberger, what a catch by Antonio Brown. Stopped on a dime. Shook the nickelback Chris Culver and got a first down at the 31. Uh, Antonio Brown does a heck of a job catching that football, but the pressure by Ben is right up in his face, and he just hangs in there. This is what he does. 
I mean, he's oblivious to the pass rush, people in his face, around his body. Slightly inaccurate throw, but Antonio Brown does a terrific job of adjusting his body, reaching back, and snagging the reception, and then getting the first down. They love to get into these trips formations and isolate Antonio Brown away from everybody. Here he is at the top of the screen. We saw Ben give him a hand signal. As he goes to Mendenhall to the right, Mott Brooks and Ray McDonald able to stop him after a gain of about four. As Rashard Mendenhall, his production is down this year. His average is just under four yards per carry. He's a player who's been a thousand yard rusher the last two seasons. Some work to do to get there here in the last three this year. Yeah, he just hasn't made the long runs. You know, a year ago, he had 10 or 12 runs of 20 yards or more. An awful quiet in the long game category. That's what Mendenhall needs to do. Break one. Just two runs of over 20 yards thus far this year for Mendenhall. He's got it this time with Heath Miller leading the way. And a first down against the best run defense statistically in the league, the 42. Boy, these shotgun misdirection runs that the Steelers dial up are strange. Watch Mendenhall accept his handoff as he picks up a pulling guard and Heath Miller is tight end. Counter plays from the shotgun. Mendenhall starts to cross the formation, then he picks up two blockers. Well-designed play by the Steelers. Play clock at three. With a four-man rush, Ben plays underneath Brown, almost deflected into the hands of Dante Whitner, and almost took it all the way to the end zone. You know, once again, Ben in the shotgun on first down. Quick release of the football. Ben throws 55% of his passes out of the shotgun. So even though he's a little bit injured tonight with the high ankle sprain, he's used to being back there in that shotgun. Antonio Brown has to make this catch. You see the one-step drop. That ball's on his hands, bobbles it, tips it away. Chris Culliver, the nickelback. Rookie out of South Carolina reaching in there. Now Rogers moves inside in the nickel and Culliver moves outside. Ben's got all kinds of time. Middle shot from Miller intercepted to Sean Goldson. Now has six interceptions. And he's got the sideline here. Tackled by Jericho Pottery at the 45 yard line. 20 yards on the return, and this San Francisco team, a turnover machine, they've created 33 this year. Two drives, Roethlisberger. Two interceptions, San Francisco. 3-0 in good field position for the Niners. Two first quarter interceptions by Roethlisberger. Alex Smith and the Niners take over at the Steeler 45. Final seconds of the opening quarter. And Michael Crabtree has another catch. He's right near a first down as the quarter comes to an end. Game nine for Crabtree. San Francisco put together a lengthy 17-play drive for the only point to the quarter after one in San Francisco. 49ers by three on Monday Night Football. Three nothing San Francisco after one. Ben Roethlisberger had not thrown an interception. Had been very sharp in first quarters this season, playing with little practice in the ankle sprain. Two interceptions first quarter tonight. Well, it's going to be a three-man pass rush, and when you have a three-man rush, you have eight defenders playing zone coverage, and you have more time to throw the foot. Who's uncovering in the middle of the field? He just late misses the throw. And let's take a look at Big Ben in the pocket. You see a little bit of a push up the middle as Trey Essex being pushed back into Ben Roethlisberger. He can't finish the throw, but he still has to complete that one. Second and one, the fullback Bruce Miller gets it this time. Squirts through the hole for the first down near the 32-yard line. This Bruce Miller. Sorry for getting excited about a fullback, guys, but <laughs> Central Florida. 
He's a defensive end. He's all Conference USA today. They make him their seventh round draft choice. He's the escort of Frank Gore, and he's coached by Tom Rathman, the great 49er fullback of years past. There he is. What a combination that must be. Miller and Rathman. Miller emerged when Moran Norris was hurt earlier in the year. There's Gore with Ryan Clark coming in down for a punishing hit after a gain of three yards. Well, you talked about Jim Harbaugh. You saw a play that looked like the West Coast offense. What is this San Francisco offense? Well, I think it's a work in progress. You know, he's got a lot of pieces that he's just getting to know. But I do think they have a power gap running game that they use to feature Frank Gore. They really don't have a go-to guy at wide receiver yet. And I think they missed Braylon Edwards' presence in the red zone. Still a, very much a work in progress. Knee problem with sideline Edwards inactive again tonight. Hard count by Smith. Here come the Steelers. Alex gets rid of it toward Vernon Davis. But it's incomplete. Well, there's the blitzes that the Steelers are known for. They overload you. You're going to see Steelers coming to the strong side right here. You're, you're going to see a couple Pittsburgh Steelers overload the right side of the 49ers. They make a mistake. Casey Hampton puts pressure on Alex Smith, and that's a wasted throwaway. Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator for the Steelers, does an excellent job mixing creative blitzes throughout the game. <laughs> what a designer he is, John. 74-year-old Hall of Famer LeBeau, third and seven. Here comes more Steeler pressure. And Smith throws to Vernon Davis in the open field. He loses the ball out of bounds after he's stretched out. Let's see where the spot will be. The rookie Cortez Allen was holding on. And at the 28-yard line, very close to a first down. It looks like he has it from here. We'll give the offensive line some credit again. They're picking up the blitzes, allowing Smith to get the ball out of his hand. Watch the effort by Vernon Davis. He knows where he's got to get to. He stays in bounds. Very, very close, lunging, leaning, then loses the ball. Boy, that's close. This official's over there right on it. It's where the ball is as soon as the body part comes down for the spot. First down, San Francisco. What an effort by Vernon Davis. You know, he's led the team in receiving touchdown catches, yards the last couple of years. When you walk around a 49ers practice field, they have a lot of big, good-looking players here. I don't know how many guys are top 10 or 11 picks in this organization, but Vernon Davis is one of them. Not often that you see a tight end picked in the top 10. They have nine top 10 players, 11 top 11 draftees. So there was talent here. Mike Nolan, Mike Singletary, the head coaches, couldn't get the offense going enough. The defense has been pretty solid. And using these tight ends... And resurrecting the career of Alex Smith, part of the recipe to get the Niners to 10 and 3. Play action, first down. Smith taking an end zone shot for Crabtree. Overthrown by the quarterback. Pressured by Lamar Woodley. Oh, he's got to hit this throw, yep. I think. They bring in Alex Boone. They have a jumbo tight end playing on the right side. They're using an early down play action pass. And they're going to come up firing, looking for Joe Staley, their left tackle down the seam. And Crabtree's wide open on a little stock and go. That's the third open receiver the 49ers have had early in this first half and come up with nothing. Well, you don't get many opportunities like that. Got to hit him. Yeah, catch Staley running up the field there. <laughs> yeah. Drawing coverage from the safety. Right? Second and 10. Here is Gore. And they get to the 20-yard line after Ziggy Hood makes the tackle. You know, but so far, the 49ers have done a good job with their protection. You'll see it right here. Here's that famed Pittsburgh Steeler, Fire X, but nobody comes in clean. You see the good pocket, a good cradle for Alex Smith, and he delivers the football. This is what your offensive line has to do when you play a complex, sophisticated defense. You must identify who you block, then execute. The 49ers have struggled their last three games, but they look pretty sharp tonight. Steeler fans making a lot of noise on this third down as Gore can't hang on in the flat. And Brett Kiesel, the end, went out there with him on the zone pressure. You know, this Brett Kiesel 
He doesn't get enough credit for being a great athlete. He has that thing they call the beard. But <laughs> I'm telling you, Kiesel doesn't just rush. He doesn't just play defensive end. He can drop off in coverage. He was a great basketball player in high school, and Dick LeBeau uses his athleticism in coverage. Excellent get off by the Steeler defense. David Akers will have a chance to eclipse Jerry Rice's 49er record, albeit a kicker erasing a touchdown record by Rice. Most points in a season by a San Francisco 49er, 141. Two field goals for SF, and the Niners are up six. Well, Christmas Eve Saturday, you'll have most of the NFL action. The game's Sunday night with the Packers and the Bears. And we are in our normal spot the day after Christmas, Monday night, countdown 7 Eastern. And then the Falcons and the Saints. Falcons trying to get into the postseason. The Saints rooting against the Niners here tonight. They'd like to have the opportunity in their hands to win the division and control their fate for the two seed in the NFC. In New Orleans, the night after Christmas for Monday night football. Antonio Brown going to take a knee. Drive three for San Francisco when you come back. Two drives, Ben Roethlisberger, his first and second first quarter interceptions of the season. All right, we're back live in San Francisco. Just seconds before we went to break, all of the power has gone out again here at Candlestick Park at 519 Pacific time, 11 minutes before we were supposed to come on the air and get started. We had a transformer blow, and we were delayed about 20 minutes or so in kicking the game off. And just as we were getting set to come back out of commercial, and the Steelers were getting ready to go at 6.43 Pacific time, here just under three minutes into the second quarter, the lights have gone out again here at Candlestick. Just perspective on this park, it opened back in 1960. It is one of the older ones in the National Football League, and the 49ers are in the process of getting ready for a new stadium down in Santa Clara, they hope in the next three or four years. The only lights that you're seeing, actually, other than the scoreboards, are lights from cameras and cell phones. Uh, those are the only lights that people are using to provide any sort of images. The auxiliary power lights at the top of each section, which came on during the last power outage, has not happened yet to this point. I look off in the distance and I see power up on the hillside, so I don't know how far spread this power situation is. This all did start, as I mentioned earlier tonight, 519 local time, just 11 minutes before we're going to come on the air, 21 minutes before kickoff. Look at the left-hand portion of your screen. You see a transformer explosion, and this is what it looked like inside. And you see in the left side, up under the Monday Night Football logo, the lights went out. Walt Coleman, the referee at that time, was discussing with security. Teams went back in the locker room. Roethlisberger, the rest of the teams came out. Our start was delayed. They gave the players a chance to warm up a little bit. And now we are in the same situation again. The last time, generators were used. It took them about 20 minutes or so to cycle and get going. And here we are in the same situation at the 12-13 mark of this second quarter with the score 6 nothing. This is uh, bizarre. You ever been through this, guys? Uh, yeah, I've been through a couple thunderstorms as a player, you know, and it slows you down a bit. But uh, this is difficult because the unknown right now, how long this power is going to be out if you're a player. You know, you're into the heat of the game. You know, you're, all, you're worked up. You're sweating all that. Now you're sitting on your helmet over in the sideline. So there's going to have to be some time for these guys to stretch out a little bit and get warm. If we go for a lengthy delay like okay. we had until the generator kicked in last time, what about from a coach's perspective? Well, you got to use this to your advantage. You go inside, you treat it like it's halftime. You try to make some adjustments. Try not to panic. It is what it is. You have to respond to these situations, and you have to make some adjustments, and what a great opportunity to do that. But for the players, they hate this, don't they, Joe? Oh, my God. It's terrible. It's terrible because it's the unknown. Walt Coleman, obviously... Try to listen in to any of what we could eavesdrop as his conversation with Jim Harbaugh was going on. He was trying to find out any potential information. Immediately when the lights went out earlier, uh, about an hour and a half ago, and some idiots running on the field and security, which has more important things to deal with right now. 
was down there tackling him and uh, taking that guy off as the players watch that. You know, about an hour and a half ago when this first hit, everybody fought back immediately. <laughs> yeah, Harrison would have knocked him out. In 1989, we had the earthquake here, and people thought about that immediately when the lights went out earlier on. But there was no shaking then, no shaking of any sort here. We saw that explosion of the transformer earlier. And we just get a look from above, and you see what the stadium looks like is one bank of lights at the bottom have barely come back on, and then other lights in the parking lot area. We'll continue to check what's happening around the area. We had mentioned the new stadium that uh, they are talking about here in San Francisco. And obviously, this facility is only used for the Niners now, not the Giants. It is antiquated. It is very old. This is the proposed stadium in Santa Clara. The political part of it is almost done. Most of the financing, starting with some major banks getting in on an $850 million loan, that's about done. This is right across the street from where the 49ers headquarters is. 40 miles south of here, close to San Jose, which actually has a larger population in the city than San Francisco does. So uh, this stadium, we may not see many more Monday night games or any games here, probably another three years' worth um, until they get that new stadium going if all is locked in. We had three night games here last year. We've had two power outages thus far. So we are in a power delay. I don't think we have rain delay theater, but we have Boomer back in the studio. We'll continue to keep you updated from San Francisco. 12-13 left second quarter. Niners lead 6-0. And, uh, of course, it's Ben Roethlisberger's ankle that he took a shot for the pain. How long does that factor in as the night goes longer and longer? As we ponder all that, here's Chris Berman back in the studio. All right, Michael, fellas, thank you. And uh, on behalf of everybody at Candlestick in San Francisco, we're sorry because this is now the second delay, and who knows, again, everybody is safe, and that's the good news. It's, it doesn't look like it's based on anything else. You all are out there. We had Stuart and the gang out there as well. So I got my guys with me. I got Coach Mike Ditka. I got Keyshawn Johnson. I got Chris Carter. I got Tom Jackson. We're here because we just can't talk enough football. Mm -hmm. Six nothing early second quarter. <laughs> Famous 49ers. David Akers, the all-time leading scorer for one season, passing Jerry Rice. So that's interesting. David, his first year as a Niner. Uh, on to this. So how does it, let, let's go how it affects them. Again, we, we hope that it will come back like the last one, like 20, 25 minutes, et cetera. Uh, obviously, question number one, fellas, would be how long can Ben play? Obviously, with two uh, interceptions. Uh, the second one, he didn't look good on at all, but the, the, it's only 6 nothing. Does the shot, do, does this limit? Maybe they hope to get him through the game, but now it's maybe we get through halftime, and then, I mean, we're only guessing now. What, what would you think? As, if you're the coach, what are you thinking how far your quarterback can go? If he took a shot and gets to halftime, he'll take another shot. That's a fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll take another mm -hmm. shot. You untape it, retape mm -hmm. it, take the shot. If you're going to play that way. Right now, you know, I, I think there's going to be a low-scoring game anyway. I thought going in it would be a low-scoring game, and I don't know, 13-10 or something. I don't know what it's going to be. But the 49ers can't do anything in the red zone anyway. But they're playing pretty good. And the one thing they did well in the first quarter, they controlled that whole clock in the first quarter. Well, you're going to have to try to stay active, Boom. I've been in, in situations mm -hmm. like this, not necessarily a power outage, but lightning playing down in Tampa, rain in Kansas City when I was with the New York Jets. So when we went in a locker room, one of the things that we try to do is stay loose as much as possible because when you go back out on the football field, they'll give you five or ten minutes to get loose, but that's pretty much it. Well, I'm concerned about Ben because the, when he started the football game, that was the best he was going to feel today, right. regardless. A shot at halftime, a shot after the game, like you can only go so much. I didn't think he would make it through the game. Now, we know that Ben has an unbelievable amount of pain tolerance in unbelievable situations. It's a lot of people can play, Boom, but Trent said this before the game, but not many can play well, especially with this injury. The key to Ben Roethlisberger's game is not just standing in the pocket and throwing the ball. The key for Ben has always been the best big man in terms of foot movement maybe that we have ever seen in the National Football League. It has brought Super Bowls to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So. The fact that he can't move, that he's trying to rush the things that he's doing, for, because in that pocket he feels vulnerable. He's not, as CeCe said, he's not playing well anyway. 
Yeah. If he's not going to play any better than this, maybe it's time to think about going to somebody else. And I'm not talking about waiting until halftime. I mean, Big Ben right now is just not playing well. And boom, it's very unfortunate the 49ers at their home stadium that they're the one that's really not benefiting from the delay. They have all the momentum in the football game. Right. Everything going right. their way. They've dominated the first quarter. Pittsburgh's just one pass away from being in the lead. Right. I think. Were, were you in Philadelphia in the Fog Bowl? Yes, sir. Well, you, you remember what happened was the f first half, it, it was sunny. It was a beautiful day, and all of it, right before halftime. And I think we got up 7, 10, nothing, maybe or so. And this fog came over the wall, and you couldn't, you know, you, you couldn't see anything. Yeah, you so remember the Your official comes to me, he says, I said, what are you going to do? He said, I think we might have to call the game. I said, what do you mean, call the game? What's that mean? He said, resume it. You know, were the scores 10 nothing, or what do you mean? Do we win? Do we get our points or not? <laughs> I had all kind of hard. Well, we went on and played the game, but you couldn't yeah, see Yeah, we were anything. trying to get it played over. Yeah, you, you could <laughs> of course. Game. Yeah, a do-over. Big Ben needs to continue to try to finish the game. And the reason is, is because of where Pittsburgh's at in the course of the season. They're trying to get that one-two seed. Okay, they need that one or two seed. They don't want to have to go on the road and play in the playoffs. They've already lost twice to Baltimore. So it's important to have the best quarterback on your football team get out there, even though he's thrown two interceptions. They're only down six to nothing, you, fellas. But you have to be very careful to make that distinction between playing and hurting your ball club. Yes, that is true. That is true. But at the same time, they're only down six to nothing. It's not twenty-one nothing. Yeah, they have it's made up. They, they have made up their mind when yes, they put they him have. in that warm-up. Yes. When they, when they, yeah, that he was trying to win this game. This game. They're not trying to win next week. This game. I mean, based on that injury, I mean, Adrian Peterson, Minnesota, last two weeks out for two weeks with the same injury. Do we off of yesterday again? We had a lot of this on Monday Night Countdown, but we're going to reiterate it because we have a lot of new viewers tonight as we wait for resumption during a power outage uh, at Candlestick. One right before kickoff, and one now here early in the second quarter with the score six to nothing, 49ers. We, they have decided after yesterday. My point was that look, I, that was the classic on any given Sunday. Uh, teams with losing records seven times beat teams with winning records. That being said, the gamble and they've made the decision is to play Ben because what are they home to St. Louis at Cleveland and then if it all goes well and the Steelers win this game, off then home. Who knows if he doesn't play the next two games and they try to get by? I mean, it's a lot of assumptions. A lot of teams made assumptions yesterday that Chiefs fired a coach. They beat a team that hadn't lost in 52 yes. weeks. So that's a dangerous game. But they do know that at least in looking at any tape and looking at any record, that on paper San Francisco is going to be the toughest game for them to keep winning by. So as you point out, Chris and, and fellas, they've made the decision. So they reshoot. I mean, again, we're, we're, we're only guessing here. Okay? We're, Reshoot whatever it I takes. Think, to I keep. think they, boom, I think they will reshoot it. I, I, I've been shot at halftime. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that we're talking about them running off a three game win streak in order to get that number one seed, right? So this is not, it's about tonight, but, but it's also about the next two games after that as well. So, so what kind of damage is done? I think CC pointed it out. What's he going to be in two weeks? What's he going to be next week when they get ready to play? Is he going to be able to? You're going to shoot this thing every week going into the playoffs? Uh, you know, trying to get a buy. I'm just. There's a lot of question marks, and, and the biggest one right now for me is the way that he's playing. Right. It's, the, it's the way he's playing. Right. And the one thing about this game that makes this game a little more significant, guys, is their playmaker on defense, James Harris. He's not playing this game. Now, he'll be back for the other two games. Right. So the combination, you get him back on defense, if you have to sit Ben, let one of these other guys win a, uh, win a game, that would make a lot of sense also. I have to say one thing, and, and I don't know if this makes any sense, but if Ben Roethlisberger right now is operating 50, 60 percent, I'd rather have Charlie Batch or whoever my backup quarterback yeah, and, is. And, and that's my point. That, that's, I'd rather have my that's backup. That's my point. Uh, let, you know what, guys? Let, let's hear, I mean, if you're just tuning in, here are the two interceptions that Ben made. We'll, we'll take a look at it. Again, you could analyze, well, it's because of the... So let's take a look. First one is Carlos Rogers right at the goal line. All right, well, that's the pick. We, we almost need an ISO on, on Ben on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is <laughs> the, on. the good Goldson, right? Uh, so here, <laughs> he certainly had time to play. So that wasn't an issue of throwing because he certainly wasn't he all rushed on that play. So what do you see in that guy? You see him. The ball was sailing. Ball that, sailed. That, ball, sa ball sailed. Failed. 
ball sailed on the ball you. Sailed and, on and you. sometimes yeah. the ball sails on you because I'm not a quarterback, but I have thrown a football. He, he couldn't step across that throw. The, the flight of the football is going to follow the arc of your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Get your back shoulder lower and your front shoulder up. The ball is going to follow that. You guys are making me laugh. That ball sailed. <laughs> you guys stop. I'm in pain. <laughs> that means it went but, up. But when you look at Ben right now and you're looking at this football game and the importance of this football game, in the next two weeks, they got the St. Louis Rams and the Cleveland Browns. Okay? You can then insert Charlie Batch into the lineup at that point in time. You hope. You, you hope. But this game, I think, is a tougher matchup for the Pittsburgh Steelers than those other two games based on what we've seen. Now, obviously, Kansas City lost. I mean, I can't see beat Green Bay. We all thought, oh, walk in the park and so did the Green Bay Packers. I'm just like CC said, when they make the decision to play him, he's there playing the night for the long haul. They're not looking to pull him out at any point in time right. in this game, especially at 6 Let, let me just say something on Charlie Batch. I know he's not the youngest QB there, but remember when Ben missed the first the, 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 the suspension, the first four, four games. games. Season. Right. Oh. Batch, I thought, was kind of that an MVP for Pittsburgh on steadying the course and helping them get eventually to the Super Bowl. So it's not like he can't play. We can't play is the problem. That's they can why, play. why they can are play. we talking football over the shot of Candlestick Park? Uh, oddly enough, named Candlestick, uh, <laughs> when we're trying to put the lights on to play might some need, football. Might, might need a couple of candlesticks. Well, I, I, I know that. Keep and, going and This is so, so. James Harrison, if I can't, <laughs> this is his tweet a moment ago. Lights out. If I can't play, then. <laughs> And can't nobody play. Lights out. Well, so I, I don't know. Mike Tirico, maybe James is saying everybody was was suspended for a game, huh? Uh, maybe he's trying to Im imply that, Chris. Thank you. The power has come back on, so this will be about a 16-minute delay. It looks like we're ready for play. The players, as you guys were talking, and we were showing, we're staying as loose as possible. The power is on in the city. This seems to be somewhat localized. There are two main lines of power coming into the stadium. The first one failed. The second one was struggling. Went out for a bit. It's back on. So we'll continue. This is the third drive of the night for the Steelers. Their first two ended in interceptions. After a 16-minute delay, we have a penalty flag. The first of the night. And we hear Walt Coleman. Approachment, number 91, defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. It's on Ray McDonald of the 49ers. If you're just joining us, San Francisco really had a chance to be up 10, if not 14, nothing. Two drives, opportunities to get touchdowns as they got into the red zone, then the fringe of the red zone right at the 20. They had to settle for field goals, which has been the story of their season. On first and five, Roethlisberger. Going to check it down to Mendenhall. Great move around the linebacker that missed the tackle. And Rashard takes it to the 37-yard line. Paris Harrelson was the one who couldn't get him a gain of 12. Well, they want to go deep to Mike Wallace, but what a nice job by Doug Ligurski, the center. Watch him pick up this blitzing linebacker to his left. Give Roth Roethlisberger time to look down the field and find his check down. And Mendenhall does a nice job after the catch. Was a nice job by Ben. He was looking deep down the field of Mike Wallace on that deep post. Wasn't there? Checked it down. First and ten. Mendenhall moving up the middle. Deshaun Goldson takes him. Gain of about six. John Sutcliffe is our sideline reporter. Been with us for about a decade on ESPN Deportes. He's covering tonight. John, what have you found out? Well, they don't want to say a lot, Mike. I went up. I... Went to the third floor to operations. They don't want to say anything. Talking to some longtime employees from Candlestick Park, they say they don't remember ever seeing this. Some man told me that he remembers the earthquake of 89, the last time the power was lost in the stadium. But to, to be honest, you can tell that they're running like hell trying to fix it, and nobody really knows, or they're not really saying what's happening or what they're doing to really fix it. Good hustle, John. Thank you. It's second and three. Here's Mendenhall with a move to the right. 
He's only going to gain about a yard and a half. Navarro Bowman, there's a yeah. guy we need to talk about. Boy, has he done some job all season. You, you know, when you, hey, oh. when you watch this film, Jaws, you think it's 52 <laughs> Willis. Man, Willis, hey, that's not 52. That's Navarro Bowman. He leads the 49ers in tackle. This kid has run through and made nine tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Second-year player out of Penn State. Boy, Vic Fangio, the new defensive coordinator, really likes what he sees in Navarro Bowman. He likes what he sees in this entire defense for the 49ers. They have been outstanding all season long. About a yard and a half to pick up on third down. And Roethlisberger stepped into that one. Heath Miller into Niners territory with a first down. Well, every quarterback loves to have that security blanket. When you need a big play, you need a big catch, someone that you can count on. Number 83, you'll see him right there. He'll be, he's in the backfield, just releases, little check down. Really good awareness of the void in the defense, the soft spot in the defense, and Ben, after the throw, gets bumped. You can see he's still favoring that injured ankle. Isaac Redman, second year out of Bowie State in Maryland, is the back. David Johnson, the tight end, comes to lead for him. Bounce to the outside by Redman. The 42-yard line, gain of about six, but a marker down. Coming back. Holding, number 79, offense. 10-yard penalty, still first down. It's on Trey Essex. He's starting over at guard because of the injury at center to Pouncey. They had to move Ligurski in at center and slide Essex into his guard spot. Well, the Steelers have been struggling to run the football. They finally got a nice positive game coming back because of the penalty on Essex. Playing behind the down now against its defense is pretty tough. That's Alvin Smith, 99, the rookie out of Missouri, seventh overall pick, ten and a half sacks this season. Number 99. His pass is complete to the sideline, and Jericho Cotchery gets most of that penalty yardage back. We've got another one down. Ben Roethlisberger always does a really good job of finding his wide receivers. Illegal formation. Number 17 on the offense, he covered up a tight end. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That one really hurt, but Ben did find Cotri one-on-one, got the ball to him on time, but that one's coming back. Well, mistakes have killed Pittsburgh. Two interceptions by Roethlisberger, and now two costly penalties to stymie this drive. You don't want to make things any more difficult than they already are against this 49er defense. And Alden Smith at the bottom of the screen Number 99, you better watch out for him. First and a quarter of the field. Smith coming up the middle. Flushes Roethlisberger. Just gets rid of it and throws it away. He got out of the pocket, out of the tackle box so he could throw it. This is a defense that is just tremendous. In terms of scoring, no one stingier in the National Football League. 14 points a game. This is a 49er defense with a lot of that talent John was referring to earlier on Patrick Willis has been setting so much of the tone during the year helping the run defense which is number one in the league 70 and a half yards per game and then you want to get an individual rusher going not against these guys want to get in the end zone on the ground not against these guys the 1920 Decatur Staley's first year of what eventually became the NFL the only other team in the nine decade history of the league not to allow a rushing touchdown in their first 13 games Look at Smith move Roethlisberger, get to him, and sack him. Alden Smith on Max Starks, a penalty in the secondary. This is just sheer power by young Alden Smith. And, and this flag could be an illegal contact foul against the 49ers. But Alden Smith is special. Prior to the pass, illegal contact on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. So from second and 25 to first down, Pittsburgh. Well, Alden Smith, underclassman out of Missouri. Watch him just bowl Max Starks. He's going to take him right back to Ben Roethlisberger, get rid of him, and then sack Big Ben for his 11th and a half sack. Very impressive. That other Smith guy there, Justin Smith, is pretty darn good, too. <laughs> ben Abel gets ankle out of there so it would have been 
That sack moving him higher up on the charts this year in the Niners, but it's a race because of the five-yard penalty, and it's first and ten Pittsburgh. Down the sideline toss to Mike Wallace. Culliver brings him down. Steelers sideline wanting a flag. Instead, it's just a gain of seven. You know, a lot of people talk about this defense of the 49ers and the stats he just showed, Mike. But what I think people need to know is there are always 11 men on the field that will tackle. I'm talking about Dante Whitner, the safety. Goldson, the other safety. Both corners. These linebackers. All 11 49ers can tackle. And their front three, their defensive linemen, make more tackles than any group in football. Love it. Starts with big old 90 over the center. Sopoaga. Second and three. And Mendenhall comes to the right. It'll be third and two. And that's a little bit of the stats in pictures. Tough to run on. Obvious right there. They hold their gap. And run defense is all about penetration, gap discipline, gap responsibility. Watch how all the red jerseys fill the gaps. There's nowhere for Mendenhall to go. Gains a half a yard on the play. Brings up a third and two. Another big third down for the Steelers. It's been a man-to-man -man situation for the 49er defense. Earlier in the game, Mike Wallace ran right by Terrell Brown. Now he's at the top of the screen against the rookie, Chris Culver. Just third and two, but because of the receivers, Niners have their nickel secondary out there. Roethlisberger throws underneath. Wallace caught it and got the first down before Culver could get him. And Goldson was a missile from the safety spot trying to stop him. That's what I like about Mike Wallace's development. He used to just go up the field and make plays. Now he crosses the field. He has no fear. I mean, that's impressive. you got to have guts to be a wide receiver in this league. And Ben Roethlisberger does an excellent job finding his alternate receiver. I got a feeling Roethlisberger is going to heat up, Jaws. Two different shoes to deal with the high ankle sprain on the left side. First down in Niner territory. Deep drop. Justin Smith chasing him. Throws it in the direction of Mendenhall, so it won't be intentional grounding. Well, this is what the Steelers love to do off their play action play. They like to get the shot play down the field, but the 49ers secondary did a terrific job. You'll see off the play fake, Ben's going to snap his head around. He's looking for the deep cross, number 17, Mike Wallace, across the field, but the 49ers covered it. <laughs> ben had to check it down, get it out of his hand before he went down. Josh, uh -huh. you, you were talking, John and I just looked at each other, mouth the same thing. Justin Smith. I take two of those. He's oh, one of my please. favorite oh, players no. in football. Let, let me get to I him, because I, I think he might be the defensive MVP in this league. What a play he made there, huh? Second and ten. Middle shot. Deflected in the air. What a job by the guy filling in for Patrick Willis. Larry Grant, 6-1, <laughs> climbing the ladder. Larry Grant. You know, he's drafted by these 49ers. Let go. Then he goes and plays for the Rams. Now he's back. Here he is on the weak side of the formation. Watch Roethlisberger drop back to pass. And Grant, he shows you something right there. Shows athleticism, and Ben's got to be careful. He's trying to stick some throws in there. He's already paid the price on a couple. Third down, Niners bring five. Roethlisberger. Scrambling, throwing downfield for Wallace, incomplete. Dante Whitner going back in coverage at the safety spot. Helps deter the long ball for Wallace. Yeah. Let's just take a look at Roethlisberger's ankle here. It's a blitz, it's man-to-man -man coverage. But watch Roethlisberger escape. Get clearance to launch one to the missile Mike Wallace. Good down the field coverage by the 49ers. John, that wasn't Ben's throw. Did you see that ball come out of his hand? That's not how he throws the football. That thing was a, a duck quacking down. There. First punch of the night by Jeremy Kapanos. His fair caught by Ted Ginn. The Niners will take over, leading by six. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. HTC Resound, the only phone with built-in Beats Audio. IBM, let's build a smarter planet. Visit ibm.com slash smarter planet.
and National Car Rental. Go national. Go like a pro. Aerial coverage from San Francisco and the Bay Area on this Monday before Christmas is brought to you by DirecTV. Mike Tirigo, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, John Sutcliffe on the sideline here tonight. Embarrassing night for the city of San Francisco in Candlestick Park, which has lost power twice here. 20-minute delay in starting the game. 16-minute delay in the second quarter. 5-19 left here in the second. In a battle of 10 and 3 teams, the Niners lead 6-0. And on first down, Alex Smith. For Vernon Davis, Ryan Clark, what a great play, separating Davis from the ball. Ryan Clark, absolutely tremendous play. It looked like Vernon had the big play on the crossing route, off the play action, driving across the field. This is terrific safety play by Clark, knocking the ball away. It looked like a big play for the 49ers. That is ball skills, ball awareness, and knocking it down and doing it legally and Clark one of the players yeah. talked about we have to be really careful almost play the game differently than we used to because of the way the rules are called and boy he adapted and did it there and he used the term bang it out of there and that's what he did second and ten four. Steelers with the physical message on this defensive series Lawrence Timmons on the inside well that time Alex Smith audible to that running play to the right he saw Troy Polamalu Number 43 is a potential blitzer on the left side. Audible to a running play away from Polo Malo, but good team defense once again by this Pittsburgh Steelers group. This is when the Steelers like to bring the heat in passing situations so far tonight. 65% blitz, heavy dose of pressure. They rush for Smith throws a first down. It's a big play. Kyle Williams catching it at the 24-yard line. Well, it's nothing fancy. It's just quick hitting pass plays. That time Alex Smith from the shotgun. Catch and release. Just a simple hook route on the right side of your screen. You see Lamar Woodley, number 56, getting chipped by Frank Gore. These are just bang, bang passes. And the Steeler pass rush doesn't have time to get there. Third drive, 49ers have scored on the first two. Let's pick up that time by Gore, and Timmons gets a hand on the pass intended for Davis with the coverage by Ryan Clark. And the 49ers are throwing the ball frequently on first down. And keep an eye on Lamar Woodley. Great pass rusher for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Has had hamstring problems for the last month. Told us last night he felt as good as he's felt in some time. And with James Harrison out, they need Lamar Woodley to make one of his signature big plays for this Steeler defense. Here he comes from the backside, chasing Smith down, but Alex gets away. Gets the first down out of the 38-yard line. You know, the one thing that people don't talk enough about Alex Smith is athleticism. He is a gifted athlete. He can run. He would prefer to play the game from the pocket, but he sees the running opportunity and takes advantage of it. You'll see Woodley coming from the backside. Alex Smith gets out the front side. Can't get there to make the play. Last eight games, it's the eighth time he's done that. Run it for a first down. Kill, kill, kill. And a whistle with a false start. False start, number 59. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. And Jim Harbaugh got this job. Every sign he sent out, guys, was, I want Alex Smith to be the quarterback. Remember, we had the lockout, couldn't spend time together. That one-day window, the first day of the draft, he gave Alex Smith the playbook. It was go learn the offense, and then go teach it, even though you're not under contract here. As soon as the lockout cleared, Smith was signed. And that confidence that Harbaugh showed in the former number one overall pick has been borne out in his 10-win season. Well, he's a mentally tough kid, that's for sure. On first and 15, Smith, sideline, Teddy Ginn. 
Run it in. Yard shy of the first down at the 47-yard line. Well done by Alex Smith on a five-step drop. Get the ball out of your hands in about 2.1 seconds. He's been very good at that tonight. You'll see the isolation route here to Teddy Ginn. Just pushes this up, comes out of the break. Watch this. Turn outside. Here comes the football. Timing and rhythm of the passing game. Very nice right now for the 49ers. Been good all night with drops. It's every offensive lineman who's dressed tonight in there. They've got seven O-linemen in now. As they run Gore through the middle into Steeler territory. That's just a great cut by Frank Gore. There are certain things you can't coach. You hear about backs with vision. Watch this run. Watch this cut back run, and he finds daylight. I love decisive backs. He doesn't pitter-patter his feet. He makes one cut, trusts it, and he's off. Good finish by Gore. It's not an offense that wows you. They don't get a bunch of fantasy football points, but complimentary with their very good defense. They're winning the kind of a playoff field game. Two-minute warning in San Francisco. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show, Chris Berman will interview Dwayne Wade, star of the Miami Heat in advance of our opening day of the NBA. And the NBA on ABC will have the Heat in Dallas to take on the world champion Mavericks in a rematch of the finals. And Hubie Brown and I will be down the coast at Staples Center in Los Angeles for Kobe and the Lakers against Derrick Rose and the Bulls. So you'll hear from D. Wade coming up at halftime, setting the table for Christmas Day and the tip-off of the NBA season. At the two-minute warning, on first down, Smith with a sideline toss for Delaney Walker and Clark, the safety and coverage again, incomplete. Boy, they love these wheel routes, we call them, where the receiver starts to the flat and then takes it up. Watch Delaney Walker in motion. He's going to run into the flat and then take it right down the field, trying to fool the flat defender. Pretty well covered by Ryan Clark. You know, he actually fooled Alex Smith in the undercut, and Ryan Clark and Alex didn't get good definition of the route. Walker now motions out. Smith goes that way, and Delaney makes the catch. Down at the 41 by Clark. We have a penalty marker down. Back by the quarterback, and where the throw happened. It could be a chop block here. Personal foul, chop block, number 21, offense, 15-yard penalty, field second down. Four go low while the rushing Steeler was engaged with another offensive lineman. Yeah, you like to chip that pass rush before you head out in your route. You'll see Frank Gore, number 21, in the backfield. He sets in his pass protection. No, I, don't, I don't think that's a chop block, guys. That's no. usually you have to be engaged. On the rusher, and uh, there was no engagement there. And thought it was pretty good to block by Frank Gore. So it becomes second and 25. Larry Foot trying to erase Gore. Reading that draw, Casey Hampton comes up with the tackle. Now the Steelers will use the timeout, trying to get the ball back here at 144. We'll have third and long coming up for the Niners. As we got ready for the game this week, John and Jaws both saying this would be a low-scoring defensive game, and we are seeing it here. 6-0, 49ers. Well, neither one of these defenses gives up a pass play of over 20 yards ever, it seems like. you got to look at a lot of film to see the Steelers or the 49ers give up an explosive play. And that's what great defenses do. And San Francisco's got to be real careful right here. Steelers coming. Smith gets out of the pocket, throws on the run, caught by Kyle Williams. Escape the Polamalu tackle, but he goes out of bounds. It's no first down. They're 10 yards shy, and it allows Pittsburgh to stop the clock and accept the punt and still have two times out left. Well, it looks like it's going to be a big gain up here, and Troy Polamalu, like a torpedo, flies across the formation when he sees his crossing route. 
<laughs> That's impressive, man. His hamstring looks pretty good right there. I, I, I love the way that played out. You know, you heard the call, Ron, 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 by Alex. They slid the protection. The backside linebacker came and created the pressure. Two smart football teams. Well, the top punters in the NFL, Andy Lee. His first punt of the evening. This guy's great. Best punters in the NFL are in the Bay Area. Over in the East Bay, Shane Leckler for the Raiders, Andy Lee for the Niners. Outstanding kick of 44. Each team limited to just three drives in this first half. Minute 26 left. If not for the power delays, this would have been a fast-moving first half. <laughs> Ten and three teams. Steelers, if they win out, they're the number one seed in the AFC. Right now, Baltimore, New England, even Houston fans enjoying the scoreboard for the moment. Here's Mueldi Moore with a first down run. We've got a nice block from Matt Starks downfield and got out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So out of bounds and 20 yards for Moore. Well, that's a great way to slow a pass rush down. You see a lot of teams in the NFL running this where the tackle sets and then goes and gets his linebacker. And here come the Steelers after a big backed-up run to Moelby Moore. Longest run of the year, his longest since 2008. Twisting 49er rush. Ben throws underneath. There goes Antonio Brown through the secondary. Culver pulls him down by the jersey, but another 20-yard game. And that's all about the protection. Once again, Ben had time in the pocket. Let that play develop. It's a deep crossing play. Ben found Brown. Move the chains. Two plays, 40 yards. Steelers driving. Just one timeout remaining for the Steelers. Minute seven left. On this drive that started at their own five. Roethlisberger out of his hands quick. Caught by Mike Wallace. Gain of seven. Inside of a minute. And this is where Ben Roethlisberger's at his best. He loves the no huddle offense. Not just in two minute situations. He loves it in any situation. Right back to Wallace. But this one was deflected. On the way in, even Larry Grant, the linebacker, subbing for Patrick Willis. Yeah, right on, Mike. They brought the heat on that time. They've been sitting back with that four-man rush and seven-man in, in the secondary, playing everything underneath as well. But here comes Grant on the blitz. Just hits the ball. Here you look at Ben right here. Tries to come over the top. Again, you can see Ben favoring that left ankle. Willis was working hard at practice the other day. Hopes to play on Saturday in Seattle. But Grant and Bowman doing a good job in his stead. Third and three, they bring five. Roethlisberger got it to Brown. Antonio not only got the first down, but out of bounds of the 43. But Pittsburgh does a great job with bunch formations. Three receivers tight in a stack. And when the ball is snapped, all three receivers scatter. And you see Antonio Brown outflank the 49ers. Ball's thrown perfectly, and they get a clock stoppage. Great call by Bruce Arians. They have a lot of good stuff in these bunch formations down in Pittsburgh. Bruce, the offensive coordinator, who Ben Roethlisberger and Mike Tomlin talked out of retirement after last season. Confusion by the Niners. They take time out. They take it with them. A talk of the Steelers, their success offensively. Antonio Brown in his second year, third year man, Mike Wallace. Heinz Ward still around at 35 years old, a 14-year veteran. And he's got some big catches left in him, especially the bigger the games get. Ward on the field, most of this two-minute drive. The best offense of the night for Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger underneath, Noeldi Moore. Got away from Bowman, almost. Touchdown at the 36. 25 seconds preserving that one timeout. And they're in field goal range right now. It'll be, it'll be a long field goal, but they'll have an opportunity to attempt one. A lot of time running off here as they exchange personnel. 
Down to 11 seconds as Roethlisberger takes the snap. Close to Moore. Got to be careful here and stay in field goal range. And he gets out of bounds with four seconds left. That was not no. the best <laughs> clock management. And yeah, that losing yards. Kill that. They could have run up there and clocked it, killed it quickly. I don't know if they have field goal range here, guys. There's Justin Smith again. <laughs> I tell you. We have four seconds left. They're at the 37. From here, a field goal would be 55. Sean Sweezum's not a 55-yard guy, especially in this heavy, damp air of the Bay Area. His long of the season is 49. So they will go for it here on the final play of this first half of the timeout taken by San Francisco. It's a good call by head coach Jim Harbaugh. He used to coach this last play of the first half, whatever you want to call it, the rebound pass or the Big Ben Hail Mary. He used to tell our receivers they never call offensive pass interference on this play, Jaws. That's correct. So go down there, do whatever you have to do. You try to distribute your three receivers. You want a tip guy, you want somebody behind them, and you want somebody in front of them so you have distribution of your receivers. But tell your offensive receivers, hey, they're not going to call pass interference, so go down there be reckless. You saw Kansas City Chiefs beat the Chicago Bears, really, with the Hail Mary earlier in this season. Take a look at the aggressive nature in which these Pittsburgh Steelers run down the field. You have Heinz Ward, Jericho Cotchery at the top of the screen, and a clear prevent defense by this 49er outfit. We put three players back by the goal line. Four seconds left, final play of the half, barring a defensive foul. Three man rush, Roethlisberger gets it out behind the play. Brown catches it, tries to get out of bounds. And that was really a poor job of managing the clock at the end of the half by the Steelers. If you're wondering why not try a 55-yard field goal, 55 is the longest field goal ever made at Candlestick. David Akers earlier this year. Niners ball to start the second half. A half with two field goals and two power outages. Here's Boomer. Yeah, Michael, quite a different evening, that's for sure. Thank you very much. A uh, power outage before the start of the game. One uh, early second quarter, and now hopefully from now on in that the rest of the power, and we don't mean to be trite here, is supplied only by the Pittsburgh Steelers and the San Francisco 49ers. Chris Berman with you here at halftime. Uh, a little bit of embarrassment for what was supposed to be really a celebration of a return to prominence, if you will, of the San Francisco 49ers against one of the true elite year-in, year-out defending AFC champion Pittsburgh Steelers. Chris Mortensen uh, with us now, and, and good evening, Mort. It, it, it's been quite an interesting evening. <laughs> what do we know from the league operations side? Yeah, they actually have Mike Kensel, who's the NFL's vice president of football operations, on site at the game, and he's working with the 49ers stadium and game, op game operations people, but also the power authority, which is on site, trying to solve this problem. And they have multiple crews there working on this. In fact, I think we have a statement, don't we, from, from the Pacific Gas and Electric Company uh, uh, spokesman. Okay, we don't have that, but what he said is, so far, I don't know what the cause is yet. We do know that Candlestick was the only customer affected by this outage. A lot of communication going on there at the stadium with New York. No, no doubt Commissioner Goodell is staying in the loop on this one, but they do have the, their vice president of football operations on site. Not that he knows how to turn on the power. No, uh, keep it on. one customer affected, rather large customer. To, <laughs> yes. A few a thousand uh, folks doing it. They have no idea now if they're all set for the game, right? We don't know. No, they don't. They, they, as you said, they have multiple crews at the stadium trying to solve the problem. Meanwhile, they're talking about a lot of different scenarios in the league if the case it goes out for good. Well, uh, two really good football teams. We hope we go uninterrupted. Thank you very much, Mort. When we return, the onset of the NBA season, and we will talk with uh, one of the best in the league, Wayne Wade, Miami Heat. Part of a big Christmas Day and evening opener. Stay with us, please. This halftime show is presented by Toyota. Tonight, two teams at the top of their game, holding nothing back, seizing each opportunity, and showing the world they have what it takes. Because there can be only one best. The Steelers versus the 49ers on Monday Night Football. Well, you see a lot of the Steelers on national TV, the national opportunities for San Francisco, few and far between. This 10-win team is showing America their defense is 
playoff caliber and worthy. 6-0 at the break. Mike John and Jaws. Niners second half. I like the Niners' plan so far. Short, quick passing game. Been effective. Alex Smith has to hit some of those passes that he missed in the first half. I think we said it at the top of the broadcast. The turnover margin is going to have a lot to do with this football game. Right now, the 49ers have intercepted Roethlisberger twice. Steelers got to get a turnover of their own. That's the one thing this defense, uncharacteristically of Pittsburgh, hasn't done. That's generate turnovers. But so far, the 49ers plus two in that category. That's the story of the game, if you ask me. They have Ted Ginn back deep to take this second half kickoff. Ginn, who had an opening day to remember with a punch and kickoff return for a touchdown. Sean Sweezum to kick it off. Steelers controlling their own destiny for the number one seed. Scoreless in the first half. And here comes Ginn. Can't even get to the 10. Erased by Stevenson Sylvester. And here's John Sutcliffe on the sideline. Mike, I talked to both coaches about how it affected the blackout, and Harbaugh says he just wanted to keep his players loose. Tomlin said it didn't affect them anything. I asked him about Big Ben, how he was feeling. He says he's fine at halftime. He, they just got to capitalize better their drives. They've got to finish their drives, and he also said we've got to take care better of the ball. We can't give up turnovers. Yeah, three drives here, John, in the first half. Interception, interception, and then that last drive that Pittsburgh had, their fourth of the game, they moved it down the field. 80 yards, but they end up mismanaging the clock really at the end of the half and don't even get a field goal attempt. This just drive four of the night for San Francisco. Starting at its own nine. And they got a false start. And the full back. Back. False start, number 49. Offense. Half the distance of the goal. Still first down. Yeah, that first half, the 49ers had opportunities that they didn't take advantage of. Here, a chance to hit Williams in the end zone. You see Alex Smith throw it behind him. Again, Frank Gore quickly in the flat. The high throw, incomplete. Had to settle for two field goals. Here, Crabtree does a nice job with the stutter go. Alex overthrows him. These are opportunities that you have to take advantage of when you play a great Pittsburgh Steeler defense. First and 14 after the flag. Gore is wrapped up. Now the Steeler defense and Lawrence Timmons buzzing in. Starting to have more of a way with this San Francisco front. And Ted Ginn, who went down awkwardly on that kick return, heading back to the locker room. Talked about the tackle made by Stevenson Sylvester. And Ginn's leg gets bent awkwardly underneath. Ooh. So they'll look at the right leg of Ted Ginn. Uh, he's their speed guy. He's the guy that takes the top off the defense. Already down Braylon Edwards inactive tonight. He's been suffering from an knee injury. Gore finding space. Polamalu was diving in to get him. Gore got down to avoid the hit right around the 12. It's a good stretch zone play off that right side of this 49er offensive front. And it breaks to the second level, but you see Troy Polamalu come from depth and make an open field spear tackle right here against Frank Gore. Nobody does it better. Fearless, reckless Troy Polamalu last year's defensive MVP. Because of the injury to Ginn, Brett Swain, who spent most of his first couple of years in the league with the Packers, 18, is the third receiver. Third and seven, good pickup. By Gore, with the pass incomplete for Crabtree, and it's three and out San Francisco. Well, you're right, Mike. Frank Gore did an incredible job. We talk about his running ability. That's what a running back in the NFL has to do, is be able to pick up the blitz. The blitz was coming by Jason Worlds. Gore picked it up, but there's an inaccurate throw by Alex Smith. Here's Antonio Brown two weeks ago against the Bengals. Took one back 60 yards. And Andy Lee, one of the premier punters in football, I'd be shocked if he gives him a great look here. 50-yard average. I'd say that's great, John. Sometimes his deep ones are down the middle. This one is 61 yards. Back to the 27 Brown. Got through a little bit of the trash, but a marker comes down, and it'll be a long field. 
we talk about why this Niner team is good. Their defense is terrific, but special teams led by Lee and then the guys covering in after. Well, Stevenson Sylvester, number 55, with a punishing block. It looks like they're going to call it a block in the back. But Blake Costanzo, number 51, hit hard. And Costanzo is a special teams phenom. We have a second flag here, guys. It's back at the spot where the punt happened, at the line of scrimmage. So while Coleman sorting. We have two fouls on the receiving team. Legal block in the back, number 53. That penalty is declined. Holding, number 42 of the return team. That penalty will be accepted and penalized from the end of the kick. First down. So they flipped the field. It was at the 13-yard uh, line, and Pittsburgh will take over back around its own 20 when we come back. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by GMC. Enter the Never Say Never sweepstakes for a chance to win a GMC Sierra Denali at gmc.com slash NFL. The droid razor, thin is no longer frail, only at Verizon. And ESPNshop.com, where you can get all of your official NFL sideline gear. To the Bay Bridge in the distance, we're here in San Francisco. It's a lovely night weather-wise. Crystal clear the last three or four days. Temperatures in the 40s. And a lot of Steeler fans in the downtown area for this visit. Mendenhall, first down run. Gain of 11 for a shot brought down by Carlos Rogers. Good start to the half for the Steelers. Man, I love counter plays. And David Johnson, number 85, does an excellent job with the pulling guard. Coming back to the right side. This is an old-fashioned counter to the weak side. It's blocked to perfection. I really like what this young Pittsburgh Steeler offensive line has done. Given all the changes that they've had, big first down. Roethlisberger playing on the Gimpy ankle. Mendenhall to the right after a gain of 10, a loss of one. Back at the 26, Larry Grant making the tackle. Now we've had a delay in starting the game and then a 16-minute delay because of the light issues here. A senior NFL executive telling ESPN, if we have another outage, we're going to stay here as long as possible to try to finish the game tonight unless it should become a public hazard with the crowd. If that's the case and the game has to be suspended, they look to finish it tomorrow during the day here at Candlestick. And if for some reason we can't play here, we'd go to Oakland and finish there. So there's the update if we have another issue with the lights. And we hope that's not the case. We made it through the last hour and 20 with the power on. Roethlisberger across the middle incomplete while covered in the secondary with Antonio Brown blanketed. So if you're just tuning in, 819 Eastern, 519, about 21 minutes before kick, Transformer kicks off there on the left, and you'll see it upper left of your screen there, and all the power goes out. The game eventually started 20 minutes late, and then a second event happened about an hour and 24 minutes later at 6.43 Pacific time. Three minutes into the second quarter, we had a 16-minute delay. Players stayed on the field, and action resumed. Man, a lot of Steeler fans here. Everywhere you go. Yeah, they travel well. Third and 11, Roethlisberger. Going left side, broke it up. Terrell Brown at the coverage on Mike Wallace. There's no flag. It's three and out, Pittsburgh. I think Terrell Brown is the story of the 49ers secondary. He played about four or five years here, and he... Rarely got on the field. Now he's starting his 13th straight game, number 25 at right corner, working against Mike, Mike Wallace. Great job breaking on the ball and getting a pass break up. I like that young Terrell Brown progress. Ted getting in the locker room. So Kyle Williams goes back to take the Capitos punt. Had trouble catching it, and the Steelers have it. Keenan Lewis on the ball first. We have a marker down. Penalty flag is down. Keenan Lewis had the ball first. Now a big scramble, and one referee official has pointed Pittsburgh ball. Here's the flag thrown. Was contact made by Lewis, or was it Lewis pushing in Reggie Smith of the 49ers? 
So we have that flag thrown back here near the catch spot. Just out of the long conversation, waiting for an official to point. We've already had one point Steeler ball. And the Steelers are furious on the field. Here's Walt Coleman. Interference with the opportunity to make a catch on the kicking team. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Steelers in sense one about the recovery they felt they had, but that was insignificant. Upset now about the flag. All right, NFC playoff picture. San Francisco hoping to get to 11 and 3, move to the two seed. They hold the tiebreaker with New Orleans because of a better conference record. Falcons and Lions in great wild card shape. Everybody else chasing, including the Eagles at 6 and 8, who can only get in by an 8 and 8 tie three ways in the NFC East. What's at stake for San Francisco here tonight? And Jim Harbaugh also hoping to do John Harbaugh, his brother, a favor. At Baltimore trying to get back to the top of the AFC North. If San Francisco wins and Pittsburgh loses, those two teams tied. And the Steelers were swept by the Ravens this year. 15-yard penalty to the 47. On the kick-catch interference, Gore gets a first down run for two. What a play by James Ferrier. This is a very instinctive veteran football player of 15 years. Diagnosis plays very well. He just blew this up right in the back here to see number 51. Bang! Read, react, make a play. Force score to bounce to the outside. And there's two more Steelers waiting for him. That Ferrier's a heck of a player. And around Father the time. time. Yeah. Second and eight, Alex Smith throws to Vernon Davis, and Polamalu brings him down in the open field. About three yards shot of the first down. You just don't find safeties with this kind of range. Watch where he comes from. I mean, he's 16 to 18 yards deep. He sees this shallow cross. He says, not today. What a great effort by Polamalu. I mean, Jaws, he, it, can, but he can play. This guy, well-deservingly, was the NFL's defensive MVP yeah. last year, but that's one of the great plays you'll see. Sooner or later, John, you got to give a look to that cross and go over the top, boy, because he is really biting everything now. Kendall Hunter, the back third and three. Alex Smith throws for Swain, incomplete. Blanketed by Keenan Lewis. And it's back-to-back -back three and outs for the 49er offense. A lot of good defensive backs in Pittsburgh. That time they played too deep with man-to-man -man underneath. And Keenan Lewis is not supposed to let Swain get to the inside. Nice wheel by Keenan Luke Lewis, and he has help from Ryan Clark over the top. Big three and out stop. That's what you do to those crossing routes right there. Knock them down. Andy Lee's terrific. The flight of the ball, getting it to die inside the 10. He did it earlier. It's fourth and three, but the penalty on San Francisco. If it is, we'll make it fourth and eight, but the Niners hoping it's on Pittsburgh in a first down. Ball start, number 53, offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Guys must be going bad today. That's, that's no, that's number 53. You're right. That's uh, <laughs> my guy, Bowman. <laughs> Maybe your eyes are going bad. Yeah, I didn't see Bowman. <laughs> Ball start there. Good call by Walt Coleman. I know that hurt you to say that. Fair catch, Antonio Brown back at the nod. So, they hang time, uh, makes it a long field again for the Steelers. Defensive struggle to teams that we'll see in the postseason. <laughs> Steelers trying to win because they beat the Patriots by eight in week eight. They would become the number one seed and control their own destiny. To have the road to the Super Bowl go through the home of the defending AFC champs in Pittsburgh. You see the rest of the equation. The Jets for the moment ahead of the Bengals because of straight to victory. But the Jets don't control their own fate just yet. Roethlisberger down the sideline. Heath Miller to midfield. Big first down play of 40 for the tight end. Wow, that's another bunch formation. And Heath Miller runs a flattened up 
Call that a little wheel route. Ball's perfectly thrown by Roethlisberger. Watch Heath Miller start to the flat, look for the ball, and then turn up the field. And Ahmad Brooks got fooled. Great throw by Ben Roethlisberger. Brooks and lost his eye discipline. Johnny peeked in the backfield. Ben was looking the other way, and he came back and found Miller. Sealers really using a lot of these bunch formations. Look at these receivers bunched up to the left side. And Miller comes to block for Isaac Redman. Just like the last drive. A good play on first down, and the ensuing first down is a loss of a yard on the ground. You're not going to make a living pounding the football up there against this 49ers defense. You give up 70 yards a game. That's the fewest yards in the NFL. 3.2 yards per attempt. I mean, they choked the running game of every team they played. And they're having a good night tonight against the Steelers. Here comes Alden Smith. Once again, the first round draft choice out of Missouri. Had a big sack earlier. He's a situational pass rusher only right now. And they'd love him to get after Max Starks again. 99, bottom of the defensive line, closest to you. Dropping in coverage as Roethlisberger throws to Miller again. He brought down right at the first down mark by Dante Whitner. Well, Heath Miller is the all-time leading receiver in franchise history at tight end for the Steelers. And you can see why. You can line him up in a lot of different formations. He's played in the backfield as a fullback. This time he just runs an outside breaking route after he looks for a hot throw. Great throw by Roethlisberger. He's starting to feel it, Ron. Yeah, John, actually, I think he looks better this second half right now. You can see the weight transfer. The ball's coming out of his hand. A little more zip, more cleanly, and on the target. You're right. He can heat it up at any time. Look out. 50 of those passing yards. Oh, the center forgot to snap count there. Everybody else was moving. Ball start, number 78, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Good. You're to the left tackle. Yeah. Well, it's failed, right? <laughs> right. Well, it's what happens. When you start where the Steelers have started drives tonight, Mike, at your own five, at your own 10, at your own 18, the 49ers just count on you making a mistake at some point in that drive they don't give up long plays earlier in this game pittsburgh had two key penalties and a couple turnovers hard to go 90 yards in this league against a good defense like the 49ers Second 15 mendenhall inside run pinballs his way from nine to the 35 yard line that's impressive. Uh, Shotgun running. You said it earlier. Because of Roethlisberger's injury, they're not doing much from under the center. This time it's just a one-back power play out of the gun. Great job by Trey Essex, number 79, as the lead escort. But the Steelers are throwing it in the gun, and they're running the ball out of the shotgun, probably because of Roethlisberger's sore ankle. You're absolutely right, John. In fact, that first half, they threw 90% out of the gun, normally only about 55%. We marked the forward progress to the 35. Two more yards than I thought. Mendenhall bouncing to the outside again in a collision with Larry Grant and Justin Smith. Justin Smith. Jaws, I'd take three of these guys. You know, he's seven years he played in Cincinnati. He's been out here for four years. Watch number 94 work over the top and make this tackle. Get off a block, separate, and stuff this ball carrier, wow. Justin Smith. Wow. wow. Now he's got five and a half sacks as well this season. 48 hits in the quarterback and 53 pressures. What a year Justin Smith is having. Third and two, pressure comes. Roethlisberger throws back shoulder. What a catch. Is he inbounds? No. Out of bounds. The twisting Antonio Brown thought he had it inbounds. But it's no, they're at the 33. Let's see if they try a long field goal this time around. Oh, yes, Antonio Brown yesterday was talking to us about this back shoulder throw. When that corner plays over the top, Antonio and Ben have such great chemistry. Ooh, that looks like he may have tapped that foot. That. Yeah, I would challenge that, but that was a well-executed back yep. shoulder throw right they there. Did. Look at this yeah, catch. They, they did, but watch his hand yep. as it comes down. Is that One. down before the second foot? with a hand oh, and that footer down the second footer down simultaneously. That's one of the greatest catches I've yeah. ever seen. If I'm an official, I go under the hood. I'm going to say it's close enough. Is challenging the Give it on to the him. Field of an incomplete pass. And Jordy Nelson, oh. uh, you know, that was the one we had a few weeks ago with Jordy Nelson <laughs> making that grab. Yeah. First challenge of the night. Comes down first. Hand or toe. Well, Colton is taking a 
peek at this is emerged from the hood. And after that review, Mike Tomlin's being told what it is. Here's Walt. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver's right hand hit out of bounds prior to the second foot coming down. Pass is incomplete. Pittsburgh will be charged with their first team timeout. Pittsburgh down to two timeouts. They can only challenge once. The remainder of the game is simultaneous. Even in super, super slow-mo, you can't really tell if that hand is down before the toe. The toe does come down and bounce right there. But uh, it's almost touching the top of the blades of the grass. And Walt Coleman said confirmed. Not stands. So it's no catch. And now here's a long field goal attempt for Sean Sweezum. Career long is 52. You know, the Steelers were coming down this way at the end of the first half and chose not to kick a 55-yard mm -hmm. field goal. Strange. I'd be alert for the 49ers for a possible fake. It'll be a season-long 51. Half knows the punter is the holder. Snapper Greg Warren. Squeeze him, nailed it inside the upright. And good with about a yard to spare. That's why I let him try the 55 yard. He's only good from 53. <laughs> Great job. Hey. <laughs> wow. The glory days of the 49ers. The tide was high for sure. Joe Montana leading them with Clark, and Rice, and Steve Young, and everybody. 14 divisions, 12 times to the NFC Championship game, five Super Bowl trophies. Low tide. 2003, 2010, eight years of nothing. They've arisen here this year. Alex Smith staying in a place where he had been ridiculed and criticized. Frank Gore's running this terrific defense. First time winning record of division title and a playoff berth in the first year since Jim Harbaugh took over after coaching Stanford in their miraculous turnaround from one win four years later to a 12-win season led by quarterback Andrew Luck. And the Orange Bowl, and now Alex Smith leading his offense. Kickoff return man, Ted Ginn's in the locker room. They're looking at his right leg, so Kyle Williams. Four kickoff returns last year, none this year. Brings this one back. Williams down at the 20. Damon Cromarty Smith with the tackle. Well, I think it's time for Alex Smith. To not only get a drive going, Jaws, but to finish a drive. You know, the 49ers have a sign on their practice field that says, you either get better or worse, you don't stay the same. And the 49ers have lost two out of three games in the last few weeks. And if they want to win tonight, it's time for this offense to step up. You just showed those ex-49er teams, Mike, that won all those games. They did a lot of it because they had great quarterback play in clutch situations. It's time for Smith. Five yards and six plays in this half. Smith trying to throw a seed. Vernon Davis beat James Farrier. Took it out to midfield. And a first down gain of almost 30 for Davis. Well, John, right on time, Alex Smith delivers a big play. He looked underneath the shallow cross. It wasn't there. You'll see Crabtree, number 15, come underneath. He's not there. But Alex stays poised in the pocket. Nice touch throwing the ball over James Farrier. And beautifully caught by Vernon Davis for the big play. And Vernon Davis would love to see one-on-one -on -one with James Ferrier yeah. for the rest of this game and the rest of his career. First play of over 20 yards, San Francisco tonight. First down play action. Smith looking downfield. Kyle Williams stretching out incomplete. And we have a flag down back here near the line of scrimmage. It's like a holding call on a 49ers. Holding number 46, offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Delaney Walker. It's yeah. a play-action pass. They're trying to get the big play down the field, but you can clearly see Delaney Walker, you know, grab Woodley, then get a hot a, a hit on, on Alex Smith. Just like Taylor, I mean, he is big, strong, fast, experienced. Well, Coach, this Ike Taylor, number 24, is an elite corner every week he covers the best receiver you have right now he's out there looking for crabtree 
To the first down throw, there is Crabtree. On Taylor, and they get the penalty yardage back. Yeah, well, he, he got fooled there, Josh. The he Did you the see slant? that? Yeah. He, he yeah. went inside, and Crabtree wide open. You'll see it right here. Check out the technique. He thought he was going inside, and Crabtree broke into the outside, just throws him. Well, you got to mix your splits up. This is a great student of the game, Ike Taylor. The only reason he hasn't been in more Pro Bowls is he doesn't have those interception numbers. But he is a very nasty tackling corner. I love his size. Every tape you pick up is all the same with Ike Taylor. Kendall Hunter, the running back for this second down. He's got the screw. Here goes the rookie from Oklahoma State, Kendall Hunter. Brought down by Colin Marlowe with the 22, gain of 27. Alex Smith does a terrific job of playing a game with the defense. The screen is all about drawing the defense to you. Watch Alex set, reset, draw the pass rush, and then dump the ball off to Hunter. That is well executed by the quarterback, setting it up nice. Nice kick out blocked by the 49ers offensive line. And Hunter, you can see the explosiveness he possesses. And again, first down. Throwing back to the tight end, Davis. He hit him. Vernon Davis is in. No, out of bounds, out of bounds. Well, we see this happen every week, week Rod. It's the old <laughs> shuck screen. You see the quarterback roll to his right and throw it back to his left. Vernon Davis is going to try to disappear. He's going to try to disappear and sneak across the formation. And Alex Smith makes a perfect touch throw over Lawrence Timmons. What a drive by the San Francisco 49ers. Let's see if he got in. Oh, he's wow. in there, isn't he? It looks <laughs> like he's in there. Wow, looks like yeah. he's in there. Here's the look straight down the sideline. Harbaugh has thrown the challenge flag. And even that look straight down the sideline of the pylon right there. Is there anything indisputable to overturn it? With all the problems the 49ers have been having in the red zone, they would sure like this touchdown. San Francisco is challenging the ruling on the field that the runner was short on the goal line. Well, Vernon Davis, very close to the end zone. First and goal, the one the worst, the best is a touchdown. This is foot stay inbounds, stay outside the whites. Look at every angle. Another one, it's a super tight call for Walt Coleman, the referee, as Vernon Davis was tight roping the sideline, trying to get the game's first touchdown here with 3.48 left in the third. You make the call. You're Walt Coleman. So there, it looks like he may have touched the line. May is not good enough in right. replay. It's got to be indisputable. I, I, I disagree with you, Mike. What about that From one there? It looks like he might be in. <laughs> in yeah, Mike. Right. He might. He might. Nothing definitive to me. the closest look at it and as you blow it up are you 100 percent sure that there's nothing touching the white there no Let's see what Walt Coleman thinks I hope he hurries because those lights <laughs> don't look too good up there <laughs> all right here's Walt he's had his look after reviewing the play the ring on the field stands Stands not confirmed means he couldn't see anything. So each yep. team is down a timeout, down a challenge. All right, here's where the 49ers have to punch it in. They have struggled in this area of the field all season long. The worst red zone offense, number 32 in pro football. They have to gain a yard. See Alex Boone out there. there, number 75, Alex Boone in there. This will be as big as the 49ers can get for this one yard. They've got everybody on their roster as an offensive lineman on the field right now. And Tomlin Sutton watched the pass. They've thrown to offensive linemen. They even threw to 86 Sopoaga, the defensive lineman, 
and is a blocker earlier this year. Anthony Dixon is the big back. Boot, Smith, Davis, touchdown, San Francisco. They should have listened to Mike Tomlin. Great play calling right there. First and goal at the one. You expect a very aggressive Steeler defense, and you run a bootleg to the right side of your quarterback and give it to Vernon Davis. Watch the Steelers right side of their defense. They're going to be full. Vernon Davis just bluffs like he's blocking and slips into the flat wide open. That's how you take advantage of an aggressive defender. Easy touchdown. Great call by the 49er sideline. Yeah, Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, took the gamble, paid off. David Akers, extra point. What do championship teams do? Answer. Steelers get their first scoring drive. They get three. The Niners go 79 yards. Three big catches and a touchdown for Vernon Davis. Brent Jones, for a long time, was the name atop the list of touchdown receptions for a 49er tight end. Vernon Davis passed him a few weeks ago, and now he has... 35 career touchdown receptions and six on the season. A far cry from the uh, day Mike Singletary sent them off to the locker room uh, mid-game when Singletary took over the 49ers a few seasons ago. He's become a pro bowler, a leader. John mentioned earlier, earlier Davis leading the team in yards and touchdown receptions each of the last two seasons. What a great drive by the 49ers. We finished, John. That was the key. They finished the drive. Antonio Brown awaits the kickoff. Gonna bring this out for about eight deep. And just get it back to the 20. Well, it's a 6-3 ball game, and you need a convincing drive. And Alex Smith hits Vernon Davis on a beautiful seam batter to start it. Then it's a nicely executed screen pass to Kendall Hunter. Then it's great play calling. It's a designed throwback screen to Vernon Davis. An excellent throw. And then it's a goal line boot to put an exclamation point on a championship drive by this 49er offense. Now it's time to see if Big Ben and the Steelers can respond. Last drive started with a 39-yard pass to Heath Miller. Roethlisberger goes to Antonio Brown on the sideline. Pick up four. And I think Pittsburgh's going to go no huddle, Mike. They're going to pick up the tempo. Roethlisberger saying, let me have this. And they do this a lot during the course of the season. Bruce Arians and Ben Roethlisberger, they even have wagers on who should call the plays. Both have a lot of confidence in what this outfit can do on offense. Shotgun run, Mendenhall. Right side's closed up. Got out of a tackle, Paris Harrison again. And what a run by Mendenhall to get a first down for 34. I don't know how you coach runs like Mendenhall just made. And if you're a young defensive lineman at home, sign off on this effort by Justin Smith, number 94. It's going to start to the right. It's going to cut back to the left. And on every single snap, the 295-pound defensive tackle is showing up for this 49er defense. Well, he's the wide defensive end. Bottom of the screen as Roethlisberger pumps. Throws over his head and wide open. Down the sideline goes Cotchery. Jericho Cotchery to the 30-yard line. Very similar play that they hit Heath Miller on earlier. Little flat route, Ben looks down the middle, all of a sudden, the secondary, the linebackers peeking back in the backfield, lose sight of the wide receiver, and Ben manipulates the deep safeties, and you get a big play. Here comes Roethlisberger, he's up and at him. the 30 Isaac Redman couldn't get out to the pulling lineman Max starts because Larry Grant made the play yeah Larry Grant been very active tonight as we said filling in for Patrick Willis 
once again, outstanding diagnosis of the play. It's that little lag draw. But you see Grant, see the handoff and attacks and makes a nice open field tackle. <laughs> Like Tomlin's listening in, he wants to know what the play is too. Second and ten, Alden Smith hit Roethlisberger as he throws, and it's broken up by Grant. You know, Grant's not getting enough credit. <laughs> yeah, he's tipped two passes, he's made open field tackles, and now he takes Heath Miller one on one. It's a simple, basic cross pattern. You see Alden Smith with the pressure, but Larry Grant, who's filling in for Patrick Willis, has been one of the stories of this game for the 49er defense. Third time he's broken up a pass. Also four tackles for the third-year man out of Ohio State. Third and 10 field goal from here is 47 yards. Roethlisberger had to step up because of the pressure and he almost threw his third interception of the night and once again the rookie Alden Smith and his pressure impacting the play I haven't seen a young pass rusher like this in San Francisco well, since Charles Haley walked in here out of James Madison this is incredible get off he's got freakish size watch him at the bottom of your screen number 99 he's eating Max Starks alive what a future this young man has. He's the missing element that the 49ers haven't had. That impact pass rusher. Great job by Smith. Squeeze him good from 51. Missed the 48. Wide left. No good. Hard to go 80 yards against this defense. Good snap, good hold. And the 49ers take over with great field position. Yep, the mechanics were very good. Sweezum just pulled it to the left. You got to really credit Alden Smith, a rookie, number 54 for the San Francisco 49ers. Larry Grant, two young, up and coming 49ers. Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator, is going to have fun with these guys for a lot of years to come. From the spot of the miss at the 38, Frank Gore. There's a lot of black and gold. He goes down after a loss of five. Jason Worlds, who's seeing the action, <laughs> replacing the suspended James Harrison, makes the tackle. Well, that last play is an old fashioned 49er 18 mile, both guards pull. <laughs> Hard to get the ball outside in the running game against this Pittsburgh Steeler defense. You've all heard about setting the edge, setting the edge. These outside linebackers, Worlds, Woodley, do not let the ball outside. Four to the right. From second and 15 to third and manageable when the third quarter starts. Oh, that's Game 12. big. That's big right there, Mike. They need to sustain offense. 10 and 3, San Francisco. Some question because they won the NFC West. How good are they? Well, the quarterback, and the old quarterback, got this thing kicked in gear, and they lead the Steelers by 10 after 3. Off we go to the fourth quarter here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, John Sutcliffe on the sideline tonight. Well, these two teams are first and second in points allowed this season in the NFL, and it's living up to that kind of billet. 13-3. Niners have the only touchdown of the game. Third and three to start the fourth. Here's Frank Gore. And the Steelers come up with a big stop here to get the ball back as Larry Foote. And your man out of Michigan made the tackle. Just hard to make a living running the ball inside against this Steelers defense. You know, they get penetration, they're down linemen, and their linebackers are just so good at diagnosing a play, reacting to a play, and making tackles. I just, I just looked down, did not see Lamar Woodley on the field there the last couple of plays, and the Steeler bench tells us he's questionable with a hamstring, which is the worst thing the Steeler fans want to hear. Yeah. 
because Lamar's really only played one quarter in the five games leading up to tonight because of that left hamstring. Andy Lee twice has pinned the Steelers inside the 10. Andy Lee is three for three. That's amazing. Outstanding puzzle. Andy Lee into the long field for Ben and the Steelers down 10. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Walmart. More Christmas for your money guaranteed. Save money, live better. Walmart, the new Capital One cash card for people who want 50% more cash. AT&T, get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. And NFL Magazine, sign up for the new monthly magazine of the NFL at NFL.com slash magazine today. Bay Bridge traffic is heavy, John. I know you're surprised. Our aerial coverage oh, tonight from the no. Bay Area brought to you by DirecTV. <laughs> Don't get John so much traffic now, Mike. There's a lot of traffic, but it, it's worth the wait. One of the great cities in America here, San Francisco. All right, let's see what the Steelers can do. Their field position's been awful because of the Niners punching. Roethlisberger deflected and incomplete. Once again, Heath Miller in these empty backfield sets is a primary target of Roethlisberger and it's number 54 Larry Grant one on one in coverage. What happens to the Steelers when Willis comes back? I mean the 49ers Josh. Yeah well Miller had a beat just an Aaron throw from Roethlisberger. Seven straight possessions starting at the 20 or in for the Steelers. Roethlisberger pressure that to get rid of it quick. Antonio Brown is wrapped up by Deshaun Goldson, who has an interception here tonight. Just well disguised. Larry Grant comes on a blitz, and Deshaun Goldson covers Mendenhall and runs right through the tackle. Yeah. Head up, eyes open, lock, lift, and drive. Textbook by Goldson. Heck of a job by Roethlisberger to read that blitz and getting out of his hand. Whistle from the side, flag down. Steelers move. Mm -hmm. No. Full start, number 84. Offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. And all this no huddle offense. Young receiver Antonio Brown. The communication has to get all the way out to Mike Wallace on one side, to Brown on the other. Ligurski in there playing as a backup center. In this noise, on the road, down 10 in a no huddle offense is going to be a real challenge for the Steelers. Handles the rocking, third and 10. Ben hit as he throws. Caught by Pottery. First down of the 28 yard line. You cannot throw the football any better than Ben Roethlisberger just rifled this one in. Watch him in the gun. Just sets that back foot. Gets knocked down by Justin Smith. And watch where this ball arrives. Right on time. Tremendous accuracy. Cotri holds on to the football. That is precision execution in the passing game. You think these 40 oh, have oh, two oh, safeties oh. that'll hit you? Ronnie Lott is loving this. On the 28, shotgun run Mendenhall. Gains a yard. Somebody threw a shoe in there. As Navarro Bowman made another tackle. The importance of the game again for Pittsburgh. They've only mustered a field goal on offense. Bruce Arians calling the plays. Ben running no huddle the last couple of drives. Mike Tomlin's team wins out. They're the number one seed in the AFC. They needed help, and San Diego down the coast in California last night gave them that help as they dominated Baltimore. But Pittsburgh not taking care of their opportunity thus far. Roethlisberger tried to escape, cannot do it, Alden Smith. Knocked the ball out two, and the Niners recover. That's just great defense by the 49ers. Nowhere for Roethlisberger to throw the ball, and eventually the pass rush just eats Big Ben alive. But Larry Grant does an excellent job covering Heath Miller. Ben's waiting for him to uncover. 
And it's the relentlessness of Alden Smith, Ray McDonald, Justin Smith. It's great team defense, but take a look at this matchup right here. Number 54 is Larry Grant covering Heath Miller. That's just nowhere to go. And as Ben is going down, Justin Smith reaches in, gets at the ball, knocks it free. As he and Ray McDonald arrived at the passing arm. So the Niners take over in the red zone, leading by 10. How can you not love Justin Smith? Oh. The 17, Frank Gore. Power play to the left to the gain of a yard. You, you can't explain it because teams emphasize it. They talk about it. Sometimes you just get guys making plays and it happens. Turnovers. And the San Francisco 49ers now are plus 24 in the turnover margin. Be a franchise record if they stay above that number. It's the best in the league. And the three tonight makes it 34 turnovers forced by this team in 14 games. And a 1981 team, I think that's Ronnie Lott's rookie year. But right now, the 49ers need to close out the Steelers. Touchdown out of field goal. Alex Smith to Kendall Hunter. Read by Clark. What a play by Ryan Clark to safety. You know, when you blitz, yeah. Jaws, yeah, go ahead. when you blitz, it's man-to-man -man coverage. And the better you disguise coverage, the further your safety has to go to make the tackle. This time, the ball's thrown in the flat. And Ryan Clark, just like Troy Polamalu, shows incredible range and open field tackling ability. Quite impressive by the Steelers' safeties. People have talked statistically about the problems of the Niners in the red zone. One thing they emphasize to us is sometimes we play call conservatively down here, knowing we have a great kicker in Akers and a great defense. Go up 13, make it a two-touchdown game. If they go conservative on a play call here. They say it, Mike, but I don't buy it. you got to be more aggressive in this area. 12 from the 19, just swing it out to Brett Swain. Brett Swain down the sideline to the 10. He's playing because Teddy Ginn got hurt. On the kickoff to start the third quarter, and the field goal for Akers will be a 28-yard attempt. I love the fact that the 49ers trust their defense, and, hey, they may get a little bit conserved in this area, but ultimately, down the road, in a playoff game, you're going to need to put points on the board. There's going to be a game where your defense isn't playing as great as you expect them to play, and your offense is going to have to put points on the board. When will that game be? I don't be? know what it'll be, but Every game it'll come down to the <laughs> defense has, has hey. played. Has been the same. I just want well, they, they lost the Cardinals last week from 28 acres. Knocks through his 39th field goal of the year, second most in NFL history in a season with penalty marker down at the end of the play. It was fourth and three, and let's see when the foul occurred. there in the middle where the guys sometimes hop on a back to use leverage to go up the block. Like conduct leaping number 94 on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So we'll pull the points off the board and take the first and goal as Lawrence Timmons called for the illegal leap. One of the big concerns you have to have if you're a Steeler fan is what kind of road team are we? They have not played their best football away from Pittsburgh, but here you're going to see Timmons, number 94. Let's see how he launches. Wow. I don't think it's no. legal about that. He put his, <laughs> hand, he put his no. hands on Mike no. no. But I didn't think that was a penalty. First and goal from the five. Smith rolling out. Looks like the old Dwight Clark play. Except he throws it away. <laughs> I told you they were going to run the right different. option. That's Dwight Clark's play. Montana looking for Freddie Solomon, and Dwight Clark makes an unbelievable franchise play. They still run it. We saw him practicing it in the tight red zone. Saw Dwight Clark about an hour ago uh, during halftime there, and he said, you know, they're going to run that sprint right option. Whenever I'm here, they always run it. <laughs> Not the same result when uh, Joe threw it to Dwight, though. Of course, for those of you under 30, hard to believe people... <laughs> Going around for the yeah. Jan 10, 1982 championship game against Dallas, the 28-27 win. Dwight Clark catching the Montana pass in that corner of that end zone. And the dynasty went on. Second and goal, four. Touchdown, San Francisco. Wow, every run the 49ers ran 
was power to the tight end side. Power to the tight end side. That time they ran counter away from the tight end side, and it walked clean. And Bruce Miller, the rookie fullback from Central Florida, you're going to see a little counter back to the weak side, and it stuns the Pittsburgh Steelers. Great execution. And I like this San Francisco running game. They have a lot of plays that start off looking the same that are different, and they have a great back in Frank Gore. It's very diverse, Sean. They'll run those whams. They'll run those traps. They'll run the counters. All very effective. Akers will take the extra point instead of the field goal. Pittsburgh has turned it over three times. Field goal. Field goal. And now the Gore touchdown. The San Francisco 49ers in control, leading Pittsburgh 20-3. Well, the Niners have lost two of their last three games. Division champs here in the NFC West. They had the early clinch. They've gone east and won games in the Eastern time zone four times this year. They've answered a lot of critics, and if you had doubts, maybe some of those have been changed after tonight's performance. Down 17. Here comes Antonio Brown. Didn't get to the 20. That's McDonald again. This Delaney Walker. He does it all for the 49ers, Mike. He catches passes. He runs right through the Pittsburgh Steelers with an impact, sudden change, special teams back. I'm going to read you the uh, area where the Steelers have started their last eight drives. The 20, the 20, the 5, 16, 10, 20, 8, 14. Over 80 yards to go every drive but the opening drive of the game for Pittsburgh against the toughest defense to score on in the league. Roethlisberger's pass is ruled a catch by Contrary at the 22. His bench slowly gets up. Alden Smith hit him, and we have a Steeler injury. It's, uh, the blocking. And Weldy Moore trying to pick up the pressure. When you play the 49ers, you better have a protection plan for Alden Smith. That's one thing we've discovered tonight, Jaws. Well, we've been looking at the same tape, John, and we talked about it all week. Watch this guy. <laughs> Look at the left leg, uh, third down back, Mueldy Moore, timeout. As we come past midnight on the East Coast at 9 o'clock out here in California, we remind you to stay tuned. GMC postgame coming up on SportsCenter. Monday night, we wrap up season 42 of Monday Night Football in New Orleans. The Saints, who are pulling for the Steelers here tonight, because they would have jumped into control of that number two seed. They'll be taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Chance to win the NFC South. Second and three, Roethlisberger. Reloading, going down again. The pass rush of Alden Smith. This isn't even fair. That time, it's a stunt off the Steelers' left side. This is the most flexible big man I've seen. Watch Alden Smith on a little inside stunt come clean. I might get Ben Roethlisberger out of this game, Jaws. He's getting hit on every drop back he, pass. He is getting hit, John. You're correct. But they ran a quick slant there. Wasn't open. Good coverage by the 49ers secondary. Allowed Alden Smith to get the Big Ben. Smith now with a sack and a half. Has 12 on the season. The seventh overall pick of the, of the draft last year. More pressure on Roethlisberger. Sideline incomplete as Ben goes down one more time. And, John, to your point here, it's 20-3. to three. You're down 17, half the fourth quarter left. Well, Starks can't handle his speed, and he yep. certainly can't handle his power. Watch what he does to Starks this time. I mean, this meet at Ben Roethlisberger on every drop-back pass. I'd be surprised if that's not it for him tonight. Yeah, you'll see right here Ben plants that back foot. Just can't come through the football, and then you get the high throw. He's under duress right now in a big way. Capados kicks to Kyle Williams. Fair caught at the 46-yard line. For the holiday week, a lot of folks get some rest. The NBA gets to work. The NBA on ABC. Christmas Day, rematch of the finals. LeBron, D. Wade, Bosch, and the Heat in Dallas to take on the champion Mavericks. And it will be in Los Angeles to watch Kobe and the Lakers take on Derrick Rose and the Bulls. Christmas Day, the NBA on ABC. And on ESPN, that Saturday night, we'll have Orlando 
taking on a team some people think can win it all, Oklahoma City. And then out here in the Bay Area, our pal Mark Jackson and the Golden State Warriors start their season. It's the new look Clippers with Chris Paul. An exciting NBA opening coming up. And look out there in the huddle, Mike. This is Frank Gore time. You have two tight ends, two backs. Actually, it's Anthony Dixon time. The big 235 pounder, second year pro out of Mississippi State. Frank Gore looks like he's done for the night. You know, he's been nursing some injuries. Get him healthy. This game is somewhat in hand by the 49ers. But I agree. This is when, you know, this is when the you know you develop that that attitude get these attitude runs going you pound out a couple first downs your defense is playing great all night long let them sit over the sideline rest up a hey, offense take care of the football move the chains say a little racial in the game gets him to the right this gets to midfield Talked about Gore, 65 rushing yards tonight for Frank Gore. So yards from scrimmage in 49ers history. He's getting close to 10,000, and he is third behind two Niners legends. Greatest of all time, Jerry Rice and Roger Craig, who was such an integral part of that West Coast offense machine. Yeah, it was fun watching uh, Jerry Rice pregame. Steve Young was down there throwing passes to him. You know, crowd was going crazy. <laughs> fun stuff. Lord, his seventh year came in the third round of that 05 draft where they took Alex Smith number one overall. With all the big bodies to the right. They send Kendall Hunter behind it. He's brought down by William Gay off the edge. And John talked about Ben and the ankle. There's Charlie Batch on the sideline. He was just warming up with the jacket on during this last timeout. Roethlisberger still has the helmet on and wants to go back out. Uh, you know Ben, he's, he's a warrior. He does not want to come out of the game. Uh, you know, he still believes, you know, I could hit a couple here, we get back in this game. Three-score game with 5.45 to go. Let's see if Andy Lee can pin them inside the 20, but really inside the 10 for the fourth time here tonight. There it is. Help. Slacking. He's at the 14. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, guys, let's go back to earlier in the game. That flag that took the field goal off the board. The 49ers scored a touchdown. Here's the first quarter of field goal attempt by David Akers. And as you watch the middle and the rush and the leap that's taken over the pile there, Jim Harbaugh on the sideline was looking for a flag as that happened. Well, brought to the officials' attention. And then we get here in the fourth quarter the leaping flag thrown on Lawrence Timmons. Quick read of the rule. Clearly running forward and leaping. Obvious attempt to block a field goal and landing on players unless the leaping guy was originally lined up within one yard of the line of scrimmage is a flag. So it's not leverage leaning on somebody to get it up, but it's taking a running start for more than a yard back and leaping like that. That's a foul. That's why it was called. That's a catch and a hard hit on Antonio Brown by Deshaun Goldson, but we have a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. This will probably come back. Max Starks holding. I'll tell you what, these safeties for the 49ers mm -hmm. will smash you. Personal foul, shot block, 33. Mm. Offense, half the distance to the goal, still first down. Isaac Redman, second shot block tonight. And you'll see it right here, Max Stark blocking, and then Redman comes in. and it's not a chop that's block. Not, again, it's another one that I would say is not a chop block. It's always my understanding you have to be engaged to the offensive lineman, then be chopped by a back or someone else. There's been a couple that have been sketchy at best tonight, and those chop blocks that have been called. Half the distance made it first and 17, and Mike Wallace has had a quiet second half. Gets out to the 20-yard line. Catch five on the night for Wallace. It's just been impossible, Mike, to get the ball down the field to Mike Wallace. You know, Ben just doesn't have time to take advantage of the speed of Mike Wallace. You know, so now you've got to throw underneath because the ball has come out quick. You'll see Wallace come off the ball here. You know, that's an easy pitch and catch in long yarded situations when you got, you know, Chris Culliver playing that far off. 
Roethlisberger cannot get away from Alden Smith. Two and a half sacks on the night. And Smith is the all-time 49ers rookie record for sacks. Well, you have to expect a stunt when the 49ers line up with two defensive linemen this wide. I mean, you're going to see the T.E. stunt. They've run it about four times, and no one's touched Alden Smith. Alden Smith's going to the Hall of Fame if this game goes on much longer. <laughs> He's going to break Michael Strahan's single-season sack record. Roethlisberger, who makes so many plays happen with his ability to get out of the pocket and scramble to keep him alive. And sitting in there tonight, another flag down as this pass is caught by Cotchery at the 34 with four minutes to go. This is on the 49ers secondary infraction. Prior to the pass, illegal contact, 29 defense. That penalty's declined. Play results in a first down. How about Ben Roethlisberger, though? Here it is, four minutes to go, 20 to three. You know, this guy still believes. He still believes. He wants to be out on the field, and he can lead his team to a victory. That's what you love about the guy. That's why this team rallies around Ben. I agree with all that, but I, I don't know how much more I want to see, Josh. Not tonight. Too much good things ahead for this Steeler team, and they got to have number seven helping. First and 10, Roethlisberger finds Heath Miller. Up the middle, knocked down at the 43 in San Francisco territory. Great throw by Big Ben. This is a grit check right now for the Steelers. You know they're going to compete until the game's over. 24 on the game there. Roethlisberger with a pump and a pass back from Miller incomplete. I see. Yeah, once again, our friend Larry Grant on the coverage of Heath Miller. He's been on him all night, matched up. They play out of that man under two deep zone. And Larry Grant has been all over Heath Miller this evening. He's been, you know, think about it. Patrick Lewis may have to earn his job back. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah. you, I'm thinking yeah. he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking he's wow. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Levitt, the linebacker, coach, a lot of credit. Yeah. Nick Fangio, this staff of the 49ers, they've developed some players and they've developed a scheme that's hard to do anything against. Look at Grant pushed back the would be blocker as Roethlisberger is intercepted for the third time tonight. Terrell Brown's got number two on the season, <laughs> that's number four. seven on the career. Four turnovers for Pittsburgh, Mike. None for the 49ers, and we said it at the very top of this broadcast. Three, uh, Pittsburgh better be really careful with the football. This time, it's just a straight go route. Terrell Brown read it all the way. That's like pat and go for Terrell Brown. Four turnovers. That brings their total to 35. And on the other side of that, the Pittsburgh Steelers are minus 11 as a football team. Very uncharacteristic of a team that's 10 and 4. That's one area that Pittsburgh has to clean up. They need to generate more turnovers from their defense, and they got to calm down and not turn it over as much on offense. I'm sure Mike Tomlin will stress that this week. You know, Mike uh, and, and John, you know, so far this year, 81% of the games are won if you are plus one or better in the turnover ratio. That's a stat that always stands out. We could talk about everything, but turnovers will kill you. That means you win or you lose or win 19% of the time if you're minus one or worse. Ball is being determined down at the two. Jim Harbaugh doesn't think it should be there, and he is uh, trying to challenge the ruling on the field. It should be a touchback in his mind. The ball brought out to the 20-yard line. And Walt Coleman's been busy tonight. San Francisco is challenging the ruling on the field that the interception was made in the field of play. Foot two, once he has it, where does it come down? That determines if it's made in the field of play or not. We'll look at it in replay. Deep in the book tonight, boys, on this uh, replay challenge of where the ball is. If the second foot comes down before the goal line on the interception, then the ball will be marked where it 
it is on the catch there. There you go. So it would be back at the two yard line there, which is where they've marked it. Now, is he touching the line? If he is, that's a touchback and it comes to the 20. I'm learning more about the rules <laughs> with you, Mike, than. When you, know what, when you know what? You, <laughs> you know what's funny? Do you sleep with a rule book? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> 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 here's uh, here's your friend Walt, John. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. San Francisco will be charged with a second team timeout, and that is their last challenge. Enough. <laughs> yeah, Walt, yeah, come on, let's go. Let's just go. I, you know, I, I'm thinking here, we're, we're down to a very few days before Christmas, and I know what I'm going to get you guys. I'm going to get you the rule book yeah. for Christmas. I've got one. But you guys take it <laughs> home and do some light reading. Hey. <laughs> well, they're happy about this result in Green Bay because... Uh, or I should say in Baltimore. I'm thinking the yes, other way around. Yeah. In Baltimore, because of what happened to the Steelers, the Steelers, as they were flying across the country, found out that Houston lost. So there was an opportunity to move up. The Patriots won, but they had the tiebreaker with the Patriots. And then they got to their hotel. We were meeting with them. A lot of the guys were watching the game up in their room, watching the Ravens game. They see the Ravens lose. So they knew tonight they could come out here. It'll be all there. It's just three wins. Polamalu and this great defense, Kiesel, Dick LeBeau's group. Gets a 49er offense. It struggles to score at times. Our chance to be the number one seed. So Pittsburgh thought coming in, but not to be. And Anthony Dixon pushes the pile out to the five-yard line. Ben Roethlisberger was the guy we watched coming in. The 49er defense perhaps taking advantage of his lack of mobility, but some of the throws to San Francisco's defense. Carlos Rogers with his sixth pick of the year. Deshaun Colson with his sixth as well. And then, as we went to the second half, John, what you pointed out before the start of the game, Ben's mobility makes so much of their offense go, and he didn't have that mobility, and the offense didn't go tonight. No, you watch this Steeler offense. Number seven creates a lot of it. It's not scripted. It's spontaneous. It's Ben Roethlisberger. He gets away from trouble. I know he's been sacked a lot, but he's also gotten away from a lot of pressure over his career and made huge plays hasn't happened tonight you know John it's more than that what is the identity of the Pittsburgh Steelers now you know they ran the ball 18 times tonight. it was a pretty close game and threw it 45 times with a wounded quarterback after they use a timeout Dixon runs again to the right and gets to the nine yard line and I go back Mike to Alex Smith his quarterback of the 49ers all the change he's been through is unbelievable seven <laughs> offensive coordinators in seven years I mean, he's played for Mike McCarthy, Mike Martz, Mike Johnson, Mike Nolan, Mike Singletary. No wonder he's been confused. But now he gets stability with Jim Harbaugh. He's in a structured system. It's an offense that suits him. He's 11-3 and three as a starter. And good for him for having the guts of seeing it through and doing what he came here to do and win a division title with the 49ers and knock the Steelers out on Monday Night Football. Davis Carey to the right. Pittsburgh takes its final time out here at 2.18 to go. Jim Harbaugh spoke about that. He liked Alex Smith having that rare character trait. Most guys would have wanted to leave Dodge and get out of here and never come back the way it didn't go well for him in San Francisco. It's gone well for Drew Brees in New Orleans and the Saints. Oh, yeah. We'll be waiting on the night after Christmas of the Atlanta Falcons. The last four meetings between these teams, each decided by three points, including the controversial Mike Smith going for it on fourth and one in his own territory. Saints won that game in OT by a field goal. The rematch. Saints trying to win the division, and Matt Ryan and the Falcons trying to get in the playoffs. On the night after Christmas, 8.30 Eastern, free game starts at 7. You guys criticize Mike Smith for going for it? No. You're going to punt the ball to Drew Brees? No, they haven't done it since so we left. We didn't say that. Who oh, said I actually thought yeah. it was the right Let's call. Let's punt it to Drew Brees. That's yeah. smart. <laughs> I would never, I, I'd never <laughs> punt to him if I ever go back to coaching again, Brees, if you're listening. <laughs> how, 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 how do facts yeah. become criticism? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Coaching skin. He has had one of his rants yet tonight, Mike. What a kick here by... Andy Lee again since Antonio Brown back. Antonio said every drive tonight is starting inside the 30. So I'll just go back to make sure it does it again. And the flag will push it back even further. 57 yard kick with five seconds of hang time. Oh. I used to coach here, Mike, and stood on these fields. And it's hard to kick here. I remember Barry Helton, Kofer, our place. Illegal block in the back during the return. 
by the receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. I mean, this is not an indoor dome stadium. Right. Heck, the lights didn't even work tonight. <laughs> it's a hard place to kick. You know, we showed a shot there of Jim Harbaugh on the sideline. There's always a lot of people that talk about the pro game being so much different. But you know what he has brought? Enthusiasm, energy, emotion to the 49ers. Kind of that, that college rah-rah spirit that the players have bought into. I mean, he's done a heck of a job with this football team. But I'm sure he's going to get a call from his brother in about an hour saying, thank you very much for that victory over the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I, I love the passion he brings to the game. A lot of good teams had tough weekends this week. Yeah. yeah. Talk about teams that were leading their division or tied for their division lead going in. A half dozen of those lost here on week 15. So you think, think you get to the end of the year, you got it all figured out. Teams are settling in. Contrary to catch to the 20 yard line. Mm -mm. Giants, Houston, Denver, Green Bay, Baltimore, and now Pittsburgh. Division leaders down week 15. Reminder, GMC postgame coming up on Sports Center. As we wrap up the night here on Candlestick Point in San Francisco. Game delayed 20 minutes. Transformer blue lights went out. Had a 60-minute delay. Early second quarter and nothing stopped the 49ers defense here tonight. Toughest to score on in the league. Giving the Steelers only three. Roethlisberger still in. Still throwing. Incomplete. Uh, I don't get it, quite honestly. I don't get it. I understand the competing part, but you're three scores down with a buck 51 to go. John said a few moments ago, this is this is your future right here for the rest of the season in the playoffs. And I don't know why he's out there. Hey, you got a long flight home. You've had a couple light delays. Run it. Get out of town. Get on with the regular season. You have a very short week coming up. Everybody plays yeah. on Saturday. Bad snap. Then has to go down and get that back at the 11-yard line, and they'll punt it with 146, 143 as the clock turns. So the Steelers close St. Louis Saturday, then at Cleveland on New Year's Day, and they will now need help from Baltimore if they want to win the division. The Ravens, who worked so hard to get the two wins over the Steelers this year, and you watch Pittsburgh not lose since that Baltimore setback. This is a team that had won eight of its last nine, four in a row. Well, no James Harrison. Woodley went out of this football game. Pouncey was held out. Hopefully they get healthy and finish like Steelers. All right, so let's advance San Francisco to 11 and three. Green Bay has not clinched the number one seed. San Francisco, if they won out and the Packers lost their last two, the Niners would be the number one seed. They'd have a better record in common games. But realistically, the magic number at one, the Niners control their fate for the number two seed because they have a better conference record than the Saints. San Francisco goes to Seattle and to St. Louis. And tonight's result means Dallas or whoever wins the NFC East would be a four seed. I know a lot of teams have come in as a wild card and won the Super Bowl, but your best percentage chance of being the world champion and hoisting the Vince Lombardi trophy is to have that bye week. Can San Francisco beat either Green Bay or New Orleans? Well, if they get them on this field, I think, well, if they have to go to Green Bay, it might be tough, but they are an outdoor team. I, I would say yes to that. <laughs> they can beat anybody. Yeah. If they keep With giving this? up 10 points or less, they can beat anybody in the world. And I saw New Orleans fly here and play last year early in the year, and it went right down to the wire. I absolutely think the 49ers with this defense, ball control offense, the way they kick the ball with Akers and Lee. That and guy don't right there. Over, <laughs> it's unbelievable. That guy, to that yeah. point of the punter, the average yes, drive start for the Steelers tonight was their own 15, the worst in any NFL game since 2005. That, the four turnovers, the three points allowed, and there's another bank of lights just went out just in time. This one's done. So on Thanksgiving, Jim Harbaugh was beaten by his older brother, John Harbaugh. And a Christmas gift is given from Jim to John and the rest of the Ravens as well here tonight. As Pittsburgh slides down out of the top slot in the AFC North.
And the San Francisco 49ers make an impressive statement tonight. 20 to 3, our final score. We'll see you the night after Christmas. So enjoy. Merry Christmas, gentlemen, to all of you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas from all of us and our great staff, led by director Chip Dean, producer Jay Roth, and all the women and men on our Monday night team. John Sutcliffe on the sideline, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski up here. Mike Tirico, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Merry Christmas. We'll see you from New Orleans on December 26th.